of course, this uh, there's a complete meltdown going on on CNN over this new Mike Johnson tape that they discovered, and it's beautiful. I'm going to go through that. We'll break that down in a little bit. There's uh, a lot of other things going on, too, but that one is one of my favorites because they're just having complete bit. meltdowns over it. Um, also, today is the 60th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination in Dallas. We got to talk about that. And these 50 hostages that the terrorists are talking about releasing. Talk about those are, those are probably three things I'm going to start off with on the show today. There's a lot of other things, too, that we'll get into as the show progresses. If you're new to my channel, my name's Brian. This is where MAGA comes to talk. This is the most pro Donald Trump MAGA place you will find anywhere, not just on YouTube, but on any platform. And that's true. You'll never hear me disagree nor criticize President Trump. That is true. And I've said that for years and years and years. So if you're new here, subscribe. Everyone who's already sub, make sure you like the video. We've got so much to cover today. Oh, man. It, and it is the day before Thanksgiving. And I was saying in the chat earlier, it seems like Friday, doesn't it? Absolutely, it seems like Friday. We're going to be live in 60 seconds. 60 seconds till showtime. Does it seem like Friday to you guys too, the day before Thanksgiving? Let me know in the chat if you're live. If you're not watching live and you're watching later, let me know in the comments where you are watching from. Like what state, what country. Just curious. I haven't asked in a while. I am in Florida, right up the road from Mar-a-Lago. All right, here we go. 30 seconds. <clears throat> Australia, Michigan, Tennessee, Maine. Wow. I was just watching the new NCIS, Sydney. The new NCIS takes place in Australia. Martin County, Florida. MAGA Martin County. Here we go. Showtime. <clears throat> All right. Yes, it is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. My name is Brian Craig. You're listening to Florida's longest running radio show, The Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. We've got a lot to cover today. And. You know, today is the 60th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination. And, you know, when I was growing up, there was uh, the Kennedy assassination was just, especially when uh, it was November 22nd and, and around that time, would always take the nation and the media by storm. And this year's the big 60th anniversary, and it really is hardly in the news. I, I really didn't see it anywhere in the news as I was doing my show prep this morning. And, you know, the thing about the Kennedy assassination, if you've ever been to Dealey Plaza and taken the tours around in Dallas, oh man, you know what, it's amazing. If you ever go, it's worth the trip to Dallas just for that. There's an incredible museum in the book depository that it's it's was really amazing and it's much smaller than i ever imagined watching it on television and in the movies dealey plaza but it, you know the thing about the kennedy assassination which happened before i was born and i, I remember you know uh, on the radio on days like that people would call in and tell you where they were when they heard president kennedy was shot and people remember that you know just like you remember where you were on 9 11 where you were when the Challenger exploded, things like that. But it's, it's strange to me how little coverage on the 60th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination is getting. But you know, over the years when I was growing up and there were all these Kennedy assassination conspiracy theories that were out there, documentaries, movies like JFK, I never bought into any of it. I just never did. And maybe it's because it was before my time and it wasn't until I've seen what the deep state has done to our great President Trump that, that I really thought about the Kennedy assassination and realized that everything people have said is true. And you know, Robert Kennedy Jr. 
uh, he gave, I've, I've mentioned this interview a few times because it was so good. Robert Kennedy Jr., I don't know, a year, year and a half ago, did an interview with Megyn Kelly, and he went through his thoughts on both the, the assassination of his father and President Kennedy. And Robert Kennedy's belief, and I agree with Robert Kennedy, is that both Kennedys were assassinated because the military industrial complex's pressure and control over this government and wanted uh, the war in Vietnam. And Pre you know, President Kennedy didn't start the, the, the war in Vietnam. Lyndon Johnson didn't either. Eisenhower sent the first U.S. troops to Vietnam. They called them advisors, whatever that means. But Kennedy, President Kennedy, was going to do a withdrawal of the U.S. presence in Vietnam. Then he was killed, and the next day, Lyndon Johnson, the new president, immediately started an increase in the U.S. presence in Vietnam. And then you know what happened. Bobby Kennedy uh, was sure to win the Democrat nomination, and Robert Kennedy was running on a, on a platform that included, a very large part of his platform, was total withdrawal of the United States from the war in Vietnam. Bobby Kennedy got killed, Nixon becomes president, and what happens? What happens? There's a major escalation in the war. Um, so all those Kennedy assassination conspiracy theories are true. Uh, he was, I know there's all these different theories. The mob did it, you know, the Russians did it. No, it was the, it was the deep state that did it. And I, and I, we're never going to have definitive proof on that. I, I really hope that when President Trump comes into his second term, he declassifies unredacted everything. You know, it's 60 years later. How many people are still alive that had any part in that? The only reason that they hold on to all of those, the Warren Committee, all those documents, and when you do get them, they're heavily redacted, is because it's not an indictment against people that are alive today because mostly anybody that would have been involved in that is dead. They're probably all dead at this point. 60 years later, come on. Come on, what are they, 100? Maybe. I doubt it. Not many of them around. Plus, everyone smoked back then. But the reason that they hold on to those files and when they do release them, they're so heavily redacted is because it indicts the deep state. That, that's, that's the way of it. You know, Lee Harvey Oswald's wife, Russian wife, was the daughter of a Russian general, Soviet general. Big, there's big deep state conspiracy with that whole thing. And they did it. God knows what else they've done. But we know what they're doing now. You know, we got a call yesterday on the show uh, from one of our listeners, and it's very true, and there's, there's reporting that uh, people that flew to Washington on January 6th, they're being followed and monitored anytime they fly. They're on a flag list. That's with an L, by the way. You know, so the, what we've really seen since 2015 with President Trump is the control the deep state has over this government. Remember Schumer? You go against the deep state, they've got, what did he say? They've got six ways from Sunday to get you. Remember he said that? And he laughed like it's just common knowledge and acceptable when Schumer said that. He was talking about Trump who challenged them. And we're seeing that now. So yeah, 60th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination. All the conspiracies are true. The deep state did it just like with Bobby Kennedy, just like they're going after our great President Trump right now. Um, your thoughts on that certainly are welcome. And there's, there's one thing I'm going to mention that Anytime I bring this up, people make fun of me, they laugh at me, uh, they discount me. But this is, this is so true about Ted Cruz, Senator Ted Cruz. If it weren't for Lee Harvey Oswald and the Kennedy assassination, we would not even know who Ted Cruz was. There's a photograph of Ted Cruz's father with Lee Harvey Oswald on the street handing out pamphlets in New Orleans. And, you know, that movie JFK that Oliver Stone put out was about Jim Garrison in New Orleans. And Jim Garrison had uh, some no-name subpoenas for Cubans in, in New Orleans that he never found. And 
I'm sure many of you know, Ted Cruz was not born in the United States. He was not born in Cuba. He was born in Canada. His father lived in New Orleans. That is a fact. That photograph, which is not the best photo. I mean, you know, come on. It's the 60s. But it's Ted Cruz's father. He fled Jim Garrison's subpoena to Canada. And that's why Ted Cruz was born in Canada. And remember... You know, when uh, President Kennedy was shot in Dallas, there were two other presidents in Dallas that day. Richard Nixon, they were future presidents. Richard Nixon was in Dallas the day Kennedy was shot. And George H.W. Bush, who was with the FBI at the time, was, uh, was also in Dallas. And both of them became presidents. And Ted Cruz came up through politics, through his connections with the Bush family. So, you know, the the Kennedy assassination conspiracy, people that were in on it are still benefiting from it today. And this the the thing that nobody believes with me is is Ted Cruz. Go online and Google Ted Cruz's dad and Lee Harvey Oswald and you'll see uh, reporting on it as well as the photographs. All right. And that's that's the way it is. And it's it's all very, very true. All right. Our number is toll free. One triple eight. Go Kane one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. We got a lot to cover today. We'll take our first break and be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. I mean, what are you guys in the chat rooms thought about that? You know, and, you know, the re- uh, the reason I believe there, you know, the, the mainstream media are, you know, it's Operation Mockingbird. We all know this, right? Controlled by the deep state. The reason that there is so little coverage on, te- there's going to be coverage of it, of the Kennedy assassination today. It's the 60th anniversary, but there's not that much. In fact, I didn't see anything in the, in the news I read in the morning. And I believe the reason that is, is because they don't want people to focus in on deep state conspiracies because the deep state's after President Trump. Yeah, it's very true. By the way, if you'd like to support all of my content, I put the link there uh, pinned to the top of the chat. Joe Thomas, he's offering his book for free. Click that link and you'll see how you can get this book for free, The Retirement Know-It-All. I've read this book. It's a, it's a book on financial security and, and in retirement. And this is good for anyone who's already retired or going to retire at any point in their life. And if you click that link, you can get the book for free. It's pinned right there at the top, jupiterjoe.com slash book. jupiterjoe.com slash book. Order your free copy of this book. And um, yeah, it's, it's filled with actionable stuff. I've read this book. It's, it's pretty good. I've got two copies. I've one I keep here, and then I got one at home, and uh, it's almost it's like a guidebook you can go back to from time to time, and you can get it for free. Click that link, and when you do that, when you get that free book, you're supporting all of our content here because you're letting our sponsors know that you support us by supporting them. So click that link and get your free book. I would appreciate that. Uh, if you're on hold, hang in there. Oh, yes. Do you guys agree with my my premise, though, that the 60th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination is not being covered like it normally would in the media because the deep state's so after Trump and they don't want people thinking about deep state conspiracies? Because most Americans believe the government killed Kennedy. I mean, it's just, it's, it's sad. That's right. If you're on hold, stand by. And, you know, I'm not sure if I said I was talking during the break to the chat room on YouTube Live. So I don't know if I said this on the air before the break or was just said this to the 
YouTube Live people, but the, the reason I think that the Kennedy assassination isn't getting as much coverage as it normally would, especially on a milestone like a 60th anniversary, because this is the 60th anniversary, is because they don't want people focused on deep state conspiracies, because the deep state's after gr the great President Trump. Now, I want to tell you, uh, there's just a few short weeks left, like three, two, three weeks left of Medicare open enrollment. It's the only time of year you can make changes to your Medicare policy. Call Debbie at I Will Advisors. She'll review your policy at no charge. Make sure your doctors and prescriptions are covered. Make sure that if you have a supplement, you're not paying too much. Make sure you have the right supplement. Maybe you don't have a supplement and you need one. Maybe you have one and you don't need it. She'll do all that for you at no charge. And you know what? No matter where you are in Florida, Debbie from I Will Advisors can help you. Her family have been with us here on the Steve Kane Show since 1994 helping Steve Kane listeners with their Medicare. Her number, 954-753-8080. Now, if you get an answering machine early in the morning, leave a message, Debbie will call you back. Once open enrollment period is over, you're done, you're stuck. If your doctor and prescriptions aren't covered, tough. Wait till next year. That's, hey, that's the government, man. 954-753-8080. 954-753-8080. You're on the air, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, Bill from Pennsylvania. Hey, Bill, what's up? Hey, Brian, a couple things. Uh, when, uh, as far as the deep state, yes, and uh, I got a few things, but uh, they got Nixon, too. Let's, but let's face it, with Watergate. Well, now, with Nixon, you know, I'll tell you guys this, and, and I want to, this, this will sound nuts, I want to credit Rachel Maddow for part of this. We all know that they got rid of Spiro Agnew for taking bribes when he was in state government, and Rachel Maddow did, remember what Rush used to call accidental journalism done by the fake news, right? She did a, a podcast documentary series on Spiro Agnew, and I didn't realize the FBI brought down Spiro Agnew. So they first got Spiro Agnew uh, out of office so that Nixon appointed Ford, who was a, uh, an establishment Republican, and a year later, they brought down Nixon, the FBI. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Have you been following the Harrison Ford Barn Raymond yesterday again? Uh, tell me about it. Not so closely, no. Boy, yeah. The great thing is that uh, Fannie, uh, Fannie Willis didn't call President Trump President Trump. She kept calling him Trump. Yes. And Floyd stepped up and he yelled it and he said, no, he said President Trump. And he also moved his chair, I thought was great. He moved his chair to sit at the end of the table so he could watch her. I love that. Well, you know, yeah. Black Panther. Did you know that? Well, he wasn't just a he wasn't just a Black Panther. He was an attorney. He became an attorney as a Black Panther to rep represent the Black Panthers. The Black Panthers the, are the black equivalent to the Ku Klux Klan. They they killed they killed people. Okay, they killed people, and uh, were proud of it and were a, a open communist. And she's the child of that. And believe me, she's a she's a Black Panther. Bush Sr. was in Dallas. He was part of the CIA, not the FBI. Oh, was it CIA? Well, maybe he was in the FBI. Uh, or maybe he was uh, CIA working in the FBI undercover. But no, he was an FBI agent at the time, uh, officially. But uh, yeah, and Nick, you know, I, 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 growing, as I said, I didn't believe any of those Kennedy assassinations till I saw what they did to Trump. Uh, I think it, well, listen, Trump opened up a lot of eyes in this country, and I'm glad he did, and, and all the way down from the A-listers, to everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Appreciate the call. Take care. You know, and if you've ever been to Dealey Plaza or some of that book depository museum, um, you know, the book depository, it's a, it's a museum about the life of President Kennedy. And then when you, and you get to the, uh, towards the end, it gets into the assassination and you end up right next to the window. They don't let people stand right at the window. They got it blocked off with special glass. You get to stand right next to it. And when I was there, any, anybody could have made that shot. I, all this talk about how difficult that shot was, nothing. And I, I could not believe, it's, it's almost like when I went to Dealey Plaza, I, was, I went there with my father-in-law, it's almost like a miniature. And uh, you go to the grassy knoll, it's tiny. I mean, the grassy knoll is like the size of this studio that I'm sitting in, you know? So... <laughs> I, there's no way uh, the things that people heard did not happen. It was a very close area. A lot of people know a lot more about that day uh, than what happened. But I'll tell you this. You know, Tucker Carlson, he uh, was speaking yesterday. 
and uh, he he said that this next year is is going to be uh, one of the most wild years we've ever experienced because the deep state and the and the uniparty are going to do whatever it takes to stop Trump, and we're going to have a year of the these court cases and uh, scandals and everything else. Let me tell you, I, I have said this for years. This is not new. I've been saying this since Trump came down the escalator. I will never criticize nor disagree with President Trump. And so many people over the years have told me that I shouldn't say that. You don't have any credibility if you do that. If, if you... Um, if you don't, you know, so like Michael Savage is, is my textbook example of this. Michael Sh- Savage is pro-Trump, but like every other Thursday, he, he would do a show trashing Trump, so we seem to have credibility. President Trump is fighting for something that nobody, nobody else will ever be able to do at this level, okay? He's fighting for our freedom from the uniparty, the deep state, and an out-of-control government and bureaucracy. He's a, he's a civil rights leader. And there are going to be terrible things said and brought up, maybe even more court cases, over the next year. And MAGA needs to be united. MAGA needs to be united. Donald Trump does not need anyone who's MAGA criticizing him whatsoever. And I want to also tell you guys this. Liberals are going to all these Trump events around the country. I was watching yesterday the Young Turks on YouTube. They're a bunch of liberal jerks. And they're, they love to interview people in MAGA hats. And, you know, when, when they put it on their program, they put on there people that say the craziest of things. And I often tell people when I, when I go to Trump events, the press are there. Don't talk to the press. They're not there to make you look good. They're there to make you, MAGA, and President Trump look stupid. And they ask people, I don't, I rarely, when I uh, do interviews, okay, and the um, uh, interviews I do, like, uh, uh, are with people I know. And if I don't know them personally, they're people I know of. Like, I, um, I was at uh, Mar-a-Lago, this was just bizarre. The week of the first arrest, the one with Bragg in New York of Trump, there were lots of MAGA people at Mar-a-Lago. The worldwide press were there. And I went there every day to see what was going on, making YouTube videos and such. And uh, there were people there uh, that were there just to get interviewed. And by the second or third day, I would hear some of these people talk, oh, I was interviewed by this, I was interviewed by that. And I went over there this one day and I met this one woman who's the Pilates instructor of Mar-a-Lago. And at the time, Mar-a-Lago was closed. Mar-a-Lago's closed during the summer. And uh, she says, oh, I'm gonna go home. There's no, there's no press here. I was interviewed all, all week and there's no one here to interview me, so I'm going home. She's like a regular woman. You know, they, they want you to look stupid. And most often, they do make you look stupid. Even if what you're saying is right, they edit it in a way. You know, and I, um, I've done interviews over there at Mar-a-Lago with people like the Daily Wire, people I know, people I, you know, new, new, people I recognize. You know, you got to be very careful. They're there to make you look stupid. What they do, these liberals, they go to these Trump events and they don't tell you they're liberal jerks. They act like they're members of the media. They interview 20, 30, 40, 50 people. They get one who says something that they can edit out of context or somebody who's not that bright that'll say something and they'll show a clip and it makes us and the president look bad you guys you know uh, i know people get all excited and want to everyone wants to be famous do not do interviews with the mainstream media liberal media or anyone you don't know and have not seen yourself on television that you trust and what I've, i've watched a whole series this week of people in maga hats doing interviews with some of the biggest liberal jerk media outlets you can imagine and it makes us look stupid some of the things people say quite honestly you know no 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 offense intended but i'm sure people would take offense to it it makes us look stupid it hurts our movement this year is the is the year where we're going to decide if we're going to be free or slaves to the bureaucracy slaves to the uniparty slaves to the deep state and uh, your 15 seconds of fame talking to some jerk 
uh, every time you say something stupid, that that's potentially something that could do harm to our, our great MAGA movement. All right, we'll take our break and be right back. Making morning radio great again. It's the Steve K Show with Brian Craig. The greatest rock and roll hits of the 60s and 70s coming up this morning. From the Palm Beach Patio Furniture Weather Center, where luxurious outdoor spaces were created. Well, uh, Deborah says throw Carrie Lake a- answers back at them and look stupid. Well, here's here's the thing. Carrie Lake, like me, is a broadcast professional, and if you're not, it's not. It, it looks easy what Carrie Lake does and what I do because we're very good at it. And if you don't have any experience doing that, you know, if you don't have any experience doing that, you, you don't have the ability to do a Carrie Lake. Now, if 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 what Carrie Lake did was easy, all the Republicans would be like that. Now, guys, listen, I got a big shipment going out of Mighty Maga Lions today by the front door. Kathy and I were boxing them up last night. If you order this morning during the show your Mighty Maga Lion, it will be mailed out today before Thanksgiving. Go to MightyMagaLion.com. There's a link in the description. These are available exclusively through me. Oh, yes. And uh, this is just a great Christmas gift. And they're very high quality. You know, this one is the first one. Right? First one out of the box. I take it with me all over the place. And look, it looks brand new. I don't leave him here. I take him home. He's in my car. I take him around. I took him to Hollywood for the star. You know, I got a picture of him on the star on the Walk of Fame. And look how look how great he looks. These are very high quality, very well made. We spared no expense. Go to MightyMagaLion.com. Order yours. Again, if you order during the program today, it will be shipped out today. And if you order multiple, you get a discount. All right? MightyMagaLion.com. Order yours. Great Christmas gift. Absolutely. All right. I'll get to Mike Johnson in a bit. The CNN's having freaking meltdowns like nobody's business. What ha- well, what happened with Loomer, uh, Don Jr. was doing a live stream on Rumble a week or two ago, and he was reading messages people were leaving in the chat. And somebody in the chat suggested that Laura Loomer be President Trump's second-term press secretary, and he read that off. And he says, yeah, she'd do good. That's how that started. Laura Loomer, um, very good friend of mine. We've been friends for years. She's got one... Um, thing working against her. Marjorie Taylor Greene hates her. I I don't know what the problem is between those two ladies, but Marjorie Taylor Greene and Laura Loomer hate each other. It was was started by Marjorie Taylor Greene. I don't know. So, So that's something that's really working hard against Loomer. I know Trump loves her. I know Don Jr. and Eric love her. I love her. But Marjorie Taylor Greene, I don't know what it is. Sometimes women don't get along in the workplace, you know, strong, dominant women. Yeah, they're, bo- they're a lot alike, Loomer and Marjorie Taylor Greene.
No. Now, guys, if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. And everyone, if you don't mind, uh, like the video, share uh, this video on all your social media, if you don't mind, help spread the word about this channel. Well, when you have two people, men or women, in the same space working together that are like clones of one another, there's always tension. I don't know what the beef is between the two of them. I don't know. I, I know it was started on Marjorie Taylor Greene's part. I think. Unless something happened that I don't know about. On Loomer's end, but I, I don't think so. Ugh. <sighs> All right, Bruce. Should I make it open phones today since it's kind of like Friday? All right, we are back. It's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I'm Brian. This is, of course, the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. Our number is toll free 1 888 Gil Kane 1. I was asking the chat room during the break, and everyone agrees with this. I said, I asked during the break, should I make this open phones today since it's kind of like Friday? So I guess we'll, we'll do that. I guess we can make it open phones uh, since it is. Kind of like it feels like Friday to me, and this last week flew by. This week is dragging by, but uh, yeah, well, I guess we can do that. What the heck, you know? It's kind of almost a holiday. A lot of people are off work today. A lot of people are off yesterday. A lot of people are off work all week. So okay, we'll keep it open phones, I guess. Although I do have a lot of things to bring up, including this amazing meltdown and panic on CNN, which I'm going to get to in just a bit over our great new MAGA speaker, MAGA Mike Johnson. But okay, we'll keep it open phones. Even though I got a lot to get into today at one triple eight, go Kane one triple eight four six five, twenty six thirty one. Now, although I would like you to call in about the things I'm bringing up as well, um, this deal that was made between Israel and the terrorists to release fifty hostages. Okay, we have always had since I've been around hostages. The first hostages I can remember being coherent about were the. American hostages in Iran. I was in third grade, and I remember it well. And um, all these people that are attacking Israel in the United States, when do we have hostages other than the J6 prisoners? I'm talking about like foreign hostages. What hostages does Israel have? I know they have prisoners that are terrorists. Um, but th this is the only period when there have been hostages, in particular American hostages, because there are a lot of American hostages over there, the exact numbers we don't know. I don't. Do you, do you trust the Palestinians with their numbers? No. Um, this is the only time I remember a major hostage situation where the media and the country weren't circled around with with burning candles and wearing yellow ribbons and tying yellow ribbons. I, I remember with the American hostages in Iran, we had candles in the windows. Remember that? Yeah. It was a big thing. And now we have hostages that the Palestinian terrorists are holding. Very little mention of them. No candlelight vigils or anything else. Just a bunch of terrorists and terrorist supporters in our major cities saying terrible things. And, I, I, and, and the reason that is, is because they don't, you know, we're in an election year and they don't want Biden to be blamed with anything. We got, this, we got this incoherent guy with severe cognitive decline celebrating a birthday like an eight-year-old kid while there were hostages, American hostages, being held by some of the most vile, disgusting terrorists we've ever dealt with. And, you know, uh, Susan Sarandon mentioned this yesterday. Susan Sarandon just, just said terribly anti-Semitic things at one of these events 
the day before yesterday and her agency dropped her. She's with one of the big Hollywood agencies. They dropped her. They probably wanted to drop her for a long time because when's the last time she's had work? It probably cost them money to represent Susan Sarandon these days. And there was another um, person who was trashing Israel that uh, lost their agent too in Hollywood. And you see that Hollywood, the Hollywood agents are standing up against these anti-Semitic terrorist supporting Hollywood morons. And you watch what's going to happen. Okay, this, and this is going to happen more and more often. Now that it's happened to Susan Sarandon and this other person whose name I don't remember, it will happen to others in Hollywood. They'll lose, they'll lose work. They'll lose their agents. Big agencies will drop them. You know what they're going to do? You know what the um, anti-Israel, anti-Semitic terrorist lovers are going to start saying? They're going to start saying, oh, look, the Jews run Hollywood. That's what they're going to start saying. We're going to start to hear more. An they're going to double down and quadruple down on their anti-Semitic hate. But, you know, this, this government we have, don't buy, you know, Steve and I were talking in the last hour of yesterday's show, don't make the mistake of believing this lie that Joe Biden and this government are with Israel. They are with the terrorists. They're funding both sides. You know, Joe Biden, if Joe Biden were a real man, if he was coherent, if he didn't wear, you know, adult diapers and celebrate his birthday like a 12-year-old kid, uh, at, a, at a Carvel ice cream shop like he did over the weekend. What an idiot. He looks stupid. He would get the, all the hostages back. And here's what you do. If you do not have all the hostages, all of them, the American and Israeli hostages released in the morning, all U.S. foreign aid to the Middle East, except for Israel, will be stopped immediately. They'd release those hostages before you knew it. If you don't release all of those hostages by the morning, there will be a 100% oil embargo against OPEC nations. Watch, they'd be, they'd be, that'd be it. You wouldn't, it wouldn't even have to happen because they would release them. And Joe Biden's not doing that. On top of the fact that he is funding the Palestinians too. Oh no, it's humanitarian relief. Really? Really? You don't think these terrorists take the money? Of course they do. There's no such thing as giving humanitarian relief to Gaza, the terrorists take whatever it is. And if it's items, they, they take them and use them themselves. If they can't use them, they either destroy them or sell them on a black market situation for money. This is, this is insane what's going on. And um, uh, to be satisfied with what they're doing, I want you to, you know, I'm, I'm listening to some of this coverage. They talk about the Palestinian baby. You know, I am anti-war, as is President Trump and the whole MAGA movement. I don't want anyone to die on either side. I am an anti-war pacifist person. However, there was an event, a 9-11-like event, really greater than that if you factor in the population size, but there was a 9-11-like event in Israel. Think about this. You know, Taylor Swift, that's all they talk about in the news. Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. Could you imagine... If on 9-11, instead of crashing planes into buildings, like they did, that terrorist went into a, t uh, uh, a Taylor Swift concert, murdered the men, raped the women, and killed the women, kidnapped a whole bunch of them, and then they, and then, and, and took them back to their country, and then left the Taylor Swift concert, and went around the neighborhood and went into people's homes and murdered them and kidnapped them too and took them back and held them hostage? What would, what would the American people have demanded, had expected, if that would have happened? That's the equivalent of what happened at that music festival. But liberals have always been anti-Semites. Liberals hate Jews. Even liberal Jews are anti-Semitic and don't support Israel. That's a fact. We've known this for a long time here. That was a hard thing to get my mind around. How, you, know, you know, look at the polls. Liberal Jews are still supporting Biden. All these polls came out, but have you seen polls of, of, of Jews that are Democrat? <clears throat> How they can still support Biden is beyond my comprehension, beyond my understanding. But that's the situation we're in. And uh, I don't want a war to go on. 
But the Palestinian Gaza needs to be completely evacuated of Palestinians. It needs to be permanently made part of Israel. And they need to be sent to the Muslim countries that surround Israel. You know, the Middle East is rich in oil. Not as rich as we are, but they're rich in oil. Israel is a, a tiny country with really no natural resources. It, it's, um, of course, the center of all the major religions, but there's no natural resources. Economically, it's a poor country. Its primary, uh, its primary business is tourism. Right? You know, and, and imagine in, inside your country, you have this whole area inside of it with people that want you dead. And that's, that's what they're dealing with there in, uh, in Israel with Gaza. And I, I listen to the, the media and they bring these people on to give the other side. There is no other side. You, you know, you don't, you, when, when there's a, a serial killer, there's no other side to that. Evil is evil. You know, when, there's, when you've got BTK, you don't bring somebody on that is defending what he did or justifying his actions. Right? I mean, but that, that's what they do now because they hate Jews. All right, now, we're going to take our break. When we get back, I'm going to get into this CNN meltdown over Mike Johnson, which is beautiful. I love this. They have found some lost interviews with MAGA Mike Johnson. I want to go through that. We'll break it down. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. I'm Brian Craig. Back after this. Bruce, thanks so much. Good morning. Always great to see you. Well, thank you so much, Bruce. I appreciate that. <clears throat> now, Thursday and Friday, we're not going to be live on the radio. We're doing best of on Thursday and Friday, but I'll still be live streaming on YouTube, guys. So <clears throat> look out for me both Thursday, Thanksgiving, and Friday. I'll end the weekend. I'll still be here on YouTube. But we're doing best of on the radio. Just so I don't have to make the long drive here and back on both days. All right. Welcome back, one and all. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, oh, man, I, you know what I'm going to tell you. And if you haven't been, you need to go. If you've been, you want to go back. I'll tell you why in a minute. That's the Dower Museum of Classic Cars in Sunrise. I had no idea 
this place was there. I was blown away. And when, you know, they're located on Hiatus Road just south of Commercial. And uh, it's nice outside, but when I walked in, I, I was in shock at what I saw. You're transported back in time. I, um, you know, I love great museums. I love going to the, the Smithsonian. I love going to Kennedy Space Center. They've got that great new museum. And the Dower Museum of Classic Cars, these cars are uh, starting from the cars in the 1930s all the way up through the 90s. These cars are completely restored, and they run, completely restored inside and out. I've never seen anything like this. It's like visiting the Smithsonian. The work is that good. I I've been telling you guys, I've been to car shows, some pretty good ones. But the cars are not in this condition. The cars at the Dowry Museum of Classic Cars are showroom new. I've never seen classic cars that are showroom new like that. It, it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, they rotate the cars around. So if you've been, go back. You'll see cars you have not seen on your previous visit. My favorite section, of course, is the Cadillacs. I've always been a Cadillac guy. I've never owned one. I've always wanted a Cadillac. And they have all these great Cadillacs. Some I remember my uncle driving when I was a kid, but they go way back to the 50s. Um, and uh, they are just uh, beautiful cars. Oh, by the way, Barry Siegel said you can give him a ring now, Mike. Yeah, so if you want to give him a ring, uh, we'll go to him in a minute. So uh, they're located in Sunrise uh, on Hiatus Road, south of Commercial. And if you have a holiday party, Christmas party coming up, it's a great place to do that as well. You can find them online at DowerCars.com. That's D-A-U-E-R, DowerCars.com. Or give them a call, 954-748-6271. 954-748-6271. Well, it's kind of, today is kind of like a holiday, okay? So uh, our schedules and, and such will be a little bit off today than they normally are on the program. But uh, coming up in just a bit, I'm going to go through, uh, I want to make sure I have time to go through it all. I'm going to go through this uh, CNN meltdown that they had over uh, these Mike Johnson interviews. And I got to tell you, I don't think Mike Johnson becoming speaker was an accident. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But first, from the Siegel Law Group, Attorney Barry Siegel, and as you know, Thanksgiving is one of the biggest holiday, family holiday times of the year. And I imagine Attorney Barry Siegel, you know, uh, sitting around with the family at Thanksgiving, there may be some people that weren't there last year or some, uh, some people that uh, were there last year that aren't there this year, it's really a time to start thinking about reviewing your trust. From the Siegel Law Group, Attorney Barry Siegel, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Thanksgiving, of course, is a uh, big-time family holiday. And, and, you know, when family gets together, we're not just talking about the family that's local. A lot of times people are flying in from uh, all parts of the country to get together, maybe the one time the, the whole year that the whole family's together. And, uh, you know, these are the times that we're thinking about our family and our children and how we want to set things up so that uh, uh, when things might happen, uh, things are taken care of. So, so uh, uh, it's, it's Absolutely. a special time of the year. But, uh, today I was going to talk about just the importance of, you know, a lot of people have done estate planning in the past. and. And the important thing is to make sure that you keep that up to date because it's not a one-time thing that you do in your lifetime and then forget about it, at least for most people. Just like anything else that we update in our lives, whether it's updating your, your financial plan or your, your taxes or anything else, your estate plan may need to change from time to time if things change in your life as far as the people that you may want to leave your your assets to, the people you may want to uh, give the important roles of acting as trustee and power of attorney and health care decisions to, uh, but as your estate may change, uh, you may need to uh, do different types of planning depending on what's going on in your estate. And then, of course, the laws change from time to time, and not very often. I was just talking about this at the seminar yesterday, how, you know, in my... 25 year career, we probably had maybe three important changes that affected most of our clients in the estate, plan, in the, uh, estate planning laws. 
but because of all of those things, it's important to have a process to keep things up to date with your state attorney. And what we do with the Super Law Group with our clients is every three years we invite our clients to come in for a free review, and that way we can keep in touch, uh, keep things on track, make sure that their trusts are still fully funded, and that they don't end up having anything inadvertently go through the probate process. So those are just some of the things that we do for our clients that uh, you know we, we find that a lot of our clients, when they've gone to other attorneys, haven't had it looked at in years or decades. Uh, and uh, so it's very important to make sure it's up to date so you have an estate plan that works when you need it to work. Yeah, I mean, you know, you get together, you know, every three years. Say you get together with your family every three years. There's been marriages, divorces, new kids are in the mix that weren't there three years ago. When you, you know, maybe, you know, and that same goes for your trust as well. And if you don't have your trust updated, or maybe you've uh, moved and bought a new house, you know, there's all kinds of things that factor in, and you want to make sure everything. When 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 Attorney Barry Siegel says the trust is funded, that means everything is covered in the trust, right? Like if somebody sold their house and bought a new condo and they haven't updated their trust, that condo may not be covered in that trust, right? For example. When we're talking about funding, we're talking about the uh, transfer or retitling of your asset from your name or your, you and your spouse's name into your revocable living trust. So it's actually titled in the trust so that it won't go through probate. That's right. Well, listen, it's always a no-charge consultation with the Siegel Law Group. If you mentioned you heard Attorney Barry Siegel on the radio, his number is toll-free, 855-FLA-3782. 855-FLA-3782. And online, SiegelLawGroup.com. All right, have a great Thanksgiving. Attorney Barry Siegel, we'll talk next week. Yes, you too, Brian, and everyone else out there. Have a great Thanksgiving. So. All right. Take care. Take care. All right. Good to hear from him. A little early today. That's good. All right. So I'm going to get into the Mike Johnson stuff in the next hour after the talk because I don't have time to do it now, but I am going to go through it. You know, Mike Johnson, just to give you a little background. You know, I don't think it was an accident that he became the Speaker of the House. At what point it was in President Trump and um, Matt Gates's mind to plug in Mike Johnson? Maybe it was all along. And they couldn't get it through when McCarthy became speaker the first time. I don't know. But Mike Johnson is an evangelical Christian Republican like we used to have. Remember uh, Ralph Reed and all those people? That's the kind of person he is. I mean, he's an evangelical, Bible-believing, strict, conservative Christian in Congress. And now he's Speaker of the House. We have not had someone like this as Speaker probably ever. And because of the chaos with removing a sitting speaker uh, before their the the you know before their time was up before the next election, and they and it was drawn out for weeks, th- there wasn't like a a uh, I, I don't want to say a vetting process. There wasn't an opportunity for the media to publicly shame. See, a lot of times when it comes to rep- this doesn't happen with Democrats, but when it comes to speakers being discussed to be, or when it comes to members of Congress who are Republican and the discussion begins about them becoming speaker, the media goes on this media campaign to smear and slander them, even though smear and slander, I guess, mean the same thing, but to smear their reputations so that they cannot become speaker. They go back in their background. They find someone they went to high school with or middle school with that makes some claim. Um, They find something they said 26 years ago. Uh, you know, they, they, they find somebody wrote something in their yearbook. You know, they, they'll find something if they're a Republican. If you're a, if you're a Democrat, you can be pictured in blackface and Klan robes and become the governor of Virginia. That's happened. But if you're, that's what they do. And, and with the confusion with the removal of McCarthy and everything that was going on, we got probably the most conservative, evangelical Christian person ever to be a Republican Speaker of the House in without the media having this opportunity to publicly shame them, to turn public opinion over uh, against them, which is what they always try to do. And they've had success with that over the years. And now what's happening is they're starting to do their smear campaigns, their vetting of Mike Johnson. And uh, the, when they try to smear him, I just think it enhances his resume. And this guy, I mean, I didn't like him when I first saw him. His hair's too perfect. I'd never heard of him. 
And, uh, you know, he seemed a little too polished for me. But boy, was I wrong. He is perfect. And he just met with the president at Mar-a-Lago this week, and Trump loves him. He's Trump approved, and that's good enough for me. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, it's Cynthia from Morton County. Oh, hey, Cynthia. Good. How are you doing? And happy Thanksgiving to all the MAGA patriots. We yes. No, no, no happy Thanksgiving to the liberals, though. Is, is that what that means? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, to the commies? No. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to give you a little background. So, August before the election, um, we had a conference call with the House Freedom Caucus, and they laid out the roadmap. I printed it. The roadmap was things like putting back the uh, uh, move to vacate, the rule to vacate the chair, many other rules. Um, all, all things that they were going to do include orientation for the new people coming in because a lot of times the new people think that they're just going to come in and they're going to get their bill and it'll be put in there and it just yeah. never happens, okay? So they wanted to educate them. We just have a minute, le we just have a minute left till the break, so but I'll... I'll... I think 100%. It was never going to be Jordan. He was behind the scenes and this is the pick. Okay? Yeah. That's the pick. Yeah, and right. it was a perfect pick. You know, and, and Johnson, if, if Johnson went through the normal process, the media would have tarred and feathered him and he never would have become a speaker. Only that confusion allowed this to happen, I think. And he's brilliant. Oh, yeah. He joined the Freedom Caucus, but he went to the meetings. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. All right, happy Thanksgiving to you as well. I'm already hungry. I gotta, I, I'm going to eat lunch today, and I probably really won't eat again until Thanksgiving tomorrow. All right, we're going to take our break for the top of the hour. And when we get back, I'll play this, this clip from CNN of Mike Johnson. It's beautiful. You won't want to miss this. You're listening to Florida's longest-running radio show, The Steve Kane Show. By the way, Alexis agrees. If you, I'm going to, I'll do this to your devices, wherever you are. Alexa, what is the longest-running radio show in Florida? It's telling you right now, The Steve Kane Show. That's correct. On the air since 1977, celebrating 46 years on the radio, The Steve Kane Show. My name is Brian Craig. We'll take our break for the top of the hour. Come back with a whole bunch more on this uh, day before Thanksgiving. Back after this. WWNN Palmetto Beach. WIRK HD3 Indian Town. Programming paid for by the Canalis Media Group. Broadcasting from the Robe Studio. Injured recently? Call the Robes Law Group, where winning is a habit. 561-570-5700. 561-570-5700. Robes, winning for you and our community. Your home for the Steve Welcome, everyone. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Everyone, please like the video and share on your socials if you don't mind. Help spread the word about this channel. The most MAGA YouTube channel in existence. Welcome, everyone. Um, we're not going to be live on the radio Thursday and Friday, but I will live stream on YouTube both days and the weekend. <clears throat> I'm just not going to make the drive up here to the radio station. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the show from my home studio or another location tomorrow. I'm not too sure. But I will be live both Thursday and Friday as well as the weekend. Just not here tomorrow or Friday. It's, it's such a long drive to the radio station from my house. I, I, the last few years I worked on Thanksgiving, but... Yeah, I haven't streamed from my home studio in a while. I probably, I probably will do that, but who knows? I might, I might take the MAGA scooter out tomorrow morning and ride somewhere and live stream from there. I'll have to see how the weather is and everything else. Oh, I love Andrew Dice Clay. They tried to cancel him, and look what they did. They made him a legend. Anyone remember the name, without Googling, of uh, Andrew Dice Clay's movie? It was a great movie. Oh, yeah, they're all spies. Yes, I know. I have one in every room. We even have them in the bathrooms at home. 
back porch, living room, kitchen, bathrooms, bedrooms. No Sean, close. Close, but not quite Sean. Hey Cheryl, welcome, good morning. It wasn't it the adventures of Ford Fairlane? Ford Fairlane's close, Kenworth, so I'll give you that. But I think it was the adventures of Ford Fairlane, wasn't it? Ford Fairlane. I haven't seen that movie in so long. What did he do? I'm going to throw this out on the air. What did he do on MTV that got him banned? <clears throat> yeah, the adventures of Ford Fairlane. Let me... All right, call us on hold standby. Hour number two has begun. I'm Brian. And I was just listening to the commercial at the uh, Andrew Dice Clay is going to be at the Palm Beach Kennel Club. And Andrew Dice Clay is probably the funniest man alive today. And I remember he was one of the first, uh, they tried to cancel him. And I remember there were two, the, Andrew Dice Clay, the first time I saw Andrew Dice Clay do his routine, it was on, it was either an HBO or Showtime comedy special. I laughed so hard, I thought I was going to break a, a rib, and I probably peed my pants. It was so funny. I couldn't believe it. He was doing the thing with the nursery rhymes back then. And two things, I remember there were three things about Andrew Dice Clay that I remember about it, other than being like the funniest man alive then, the funniest man alive today, Andrew Dice Clay. But he, he was banned from MTV for life for something he did during the Video Music Awards. And I can't remember what it was exactly he did. If anybody remembers exactly what Andrew Dice Clay did, he got banned from M MTV for life. Like that means anything. He's at, he survived MTV. But I remember, so I cannot remember what he did. or say, He said something. But if you remember what Andrew, and again, we're on the radio, so you have to use first letters and stuff. What did Andrew Dice Clay do or say that got him banned from MTV for life? And then I remember it was the Video Music Awards is where it had to have happened. The next, and he became a superstar after that beyond what he already was. He was famous, but he was like the most famous man on earth after MTV banned him for life. The next year, for the, it was at the Video Music Awards. The very next year, he was so famous, they brought him back. He was part of the open of, of the MTV Awards. That was, and then the other thing I remember... He was a guest on Arsenio Hall, the Arsenio Hall show. All this stuff happened before you were born, Mike, okay? But that's okay. But uh, he was a guest on the Arsenio Hall show, and Arsenio had a, uh, <laughs> he had this band, and for some reason they said he was sexist. I thought he was just funny as heck. I mean, you know. And there was a, I remember this like it was yesterday. In Arsenio Hall's band, they were supposed to be like cool. There was a girl in the band who was named Star. Star. And when Andrew Dice Clay appeared on the Arsenio Hall show, Star took the night off and would not play with the band because Andrew Dice Clay was there. Remember that? <laughs> remember that? And now he's still as funny as ever. But if you remember what he did on MTV that got him banned for life, and then they begged him to come back, and he did next the following year. I, I just was curious. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, hey, Doug. Did I wake you? What? Have... You called me, right? I didn't know it was on. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, first of all, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to you and Steve. 
great show. Thank you. When you, when you had your uh, uh, podcast about this morning yoga, I was watching that. I don't know how they can allow that guy to be on without being censored. Or, matter of fact, I think CNN should lose their license to have this guy spew all these l- lousy lies about President Trump. Yeah, I, on my podcast last night, uh, we were talking about uh, Joe Scarborough had a meltdown beyond imagination. Uh, against President Trump yesterday, and I gave some background. I don't want to get into it now, but listen to my podcast, which is on all podcast platforms on my YouTube channel from yesterday. I gave some background on Joe Scarborough and Mika and why they really hate President Trump, and it's it's so pathetic. Yeah, it's disgusting. And then uh, somebody else on CNN said something that I didn't want to say about President Trump. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, that that guy. I don't want even want to start that discussion. Uh, that happened two days ago. That was a congressman who said something about President Trump. He should be arrested for what he said. Without a doubt, without a doubt, and and, and seeing it puts it on. You know, their license should be revoked, in my opinion. You know? Well, they don't have. I you know I'm not for limiting people's speech because we don't like what they say. But um, but but there are if. If some if if a Republican said about any Democrat what that congressman said about President Trump, they would be arrested. That's for sure. That's for sure. And, and, well, anyway, I mean, you, CNN is supposed to have some sort of. Uh, uh, you can't say certain things on the radio. CNN should not be able to say certain things. Might well, here's the problem. Here here's the problem. They can't, but because they said it about Trump, they get a pass. You understand? Yeah. Exactly, man. Uh, but uh, I, I, I also, I also love uh, the nice guy, man. Uh, oh, Andrew Dice Clay's the best. Uh, uh, he was so funny, but he disappeared for a while. But now he's back and it's made good. Oh, I, I, I it, now listen. There's a there's a handful of great comedians. Okay, Joan Rivers, Don Rickles. You know, uh, Jerry Seinfeld and Andrew Dice Clay is right there with him. I mean, they're right. Th- I mean, he is right up there with. I think. I think Joan Rivers is the funniest woman who's ever lived. Okay, without a doubt. And but Don, Don Rickles and Andrew Dice Clay are uh, the equivalent and greater than Chris Rock, by the way. I and I'm not saying that because I have nothing to do with with uh, the uh, the Kennel Club or anything. This is not an advertisement. But you should guys should go. Uh, but I, I think Andrew Dice Clay, I, I love him. And when when he when MTV banned him for life, and then they begged him back a year, that was a big deal. Then, okay, that was a big deal. There was no internet, there were no other platforms, and that was that was a big deal. And and what he did after that was continue to do what it is he did. And and look, he's outlasted all of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's a lack of good comedians out there now. There's hardly anybody anymore. Well, how can you be funny? I mean, you know, first off, uh, um, you, you know, if, if you tell a joke, you know, you're you're sexist. You're almost every joke is poking fun at someone. And you know, I'm not a comedian, but I do know this about comedy. Okay, for a joke to be funny, there has to be some truth to it for it to be funny. And that's then that's the way it is. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and today you have to watch everything you say. As a matter of fact, there's a little song that's about that. Anyway, but, uh, all right, all right. Take care. Have have a good. All right, take care. Thanks. Have a great Thanksgiving. I like how he's listening to my podcast and the radio. That's great. The Brian Craig Show podcast. The no, name the number three must listen to conservative podcast in America for several years running now. By the way, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Mike from Louisiana. Oh, hey, Mike. How you doing? You know, you know what, what did they say about Megan Mike Johnson when they found out that he was going to be speaker? They said, well, this guy's a backbencher, right? Meaning that he wasn't the first choice. He wasn't the second choice. He wasn't even maybe the tenth choice, you know? He was just a guy that was there that just got in on the skin of his teeth. You know, that, that type of thing, you know. I don't agree with any of that. I know, you know, I, you know, Mike Johnson, what we've come to learn, he's not a backbencher. He's a very patient, politically savvy man and uh, was part of an operation to, to make this happen. Right, and here's the deal. These interviews, which I will have to go find and watch them, 
I will bet you the reason why CNN's freaking out over these interviews is that there's nothing in these interviews that will allow them. They'll probably make something up to try to smear. Yeah. Nothing in these interviews that will allow them to smear the man. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what Andrew Dice Clay? Do you, let me ask you. You're you're old. You're old enough to remember Andrew Dice Clay and MTV. You got to be. What do you do? You remember what he did that got him banned from MTV for life? I cannot remember. It had to be good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go. Look. I, I can't remember what it was. I just remember he got banned for life. They brought him back, and then they brought him back. The very they 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 no 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 no. He he did something at the MTV Music Awards, and then the and then he got banned for life from MTV. And the very next year. He was part of the open of the MTV Video Awards the very next year, the very next one. I remember it like I was yesterday. Cause I used to think things like that were important, like MTV and stuff, you know. And I, I remember the very next year he was part of the opening uh, act. Right, and then and then a few years later, I believe was when they did uh, the Adventures of Ford Fairlane, the movie. That's right, Adventures of Ford Fairlane. That's correct. See you, Arnold. All right, take care. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Brother Brian. I.B. in Brown. Hey, I.B., what's up? I don't remember what happened, but I still love, uh, I still love him. I still have one of uh, his jokes I, I carry around with me now and again. Jack and Jill went up the hill, each with a buck and a quarter. Ten minutes later, Jill came down with 250. Oh! Yeah, I know. You know, I didn't even get a lot of those jokes back then. I get them all now. The ones I didn't get then, they were still funny, though. Even though I didn't get them, they were still funny. You know, there was another one, Hickory Dickory Doc. I, I can't even go further than that one. Remember that one? And remember, and and then he, you know, he had this Andrew Dice Clay. What he what he did then? It was it was it was brilliant. It was some of the most brilliant comedy probably ever created. He when he he had he went through all the popular nursery rhymes, every single one of them. Little Boy Blue, The Three Blind Mice. He went through every nursery rhyme you ever heard of, and he turned it into the the, the most brilliant piece of comedy that you've ever ever heard in your life and somebody just said oh robin williams was robin williams was a junkie high on cocaine and who made no sense okay i don't know what i'm gonna have to go back in time and watch some of his stuff i also think uh phyllis dill was probably just as or more funny than joan rivers i know i love joan rivers too but i think phyllis dill might still hold that trophy no one no one no one no 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 one is as funny no woman ever lived as funny as Joan Rivers. Phyllis Dill is very funny. There's lots of funny people, but there's there's the top the top American comedians are uh, Don Rickles, Joan Rivers, Andrew Dice Clay, Chris Rock. I'm going to throw Seinfeld in there because I I like that Seinfeld does it without any. He's very clever. I like him too. And then I mean, there's very funny people after that, but those are the those are the four or five tops. Let me say this really quickly, Brian, because I know other people. Um, when when Steve when Steve said what's going to happen with all the uh, pre- um, with all the uh, the Republican contestants, and I and the, the final end of the show was I was telling him that we must put a MAGA person in that speakership. Now Trump had to go along for a while because remember there were there were so many votes to get Kevin in. It was so many redos, so to speak. And he he did not he did not hone in on who he wanted at that time, and, and but he, he had to put someone there that would also attack, uh, satisfy the establishment until he found the person. Remember, I said Trump, Trump is biblically sent. We see what happened when the case is being tossed out on on false on pretenses, and now we have we have a guy he already he already did the, the first big action. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gave them a little uh, gave them a little appease, appeasement with the money. Mm-hmm. We got all the. You got all the tapes out. Now now it's going to go down to the timeline on this trial. The timeline is Trump is still speaking while they were breaking in only on one side. There's over 10,000 people at that place, and if it really was a takeover, they would attack from all the sides. But it was only, they only wanted the visual from the one side, and they allowed the people to walk in casually on the other side. That's why he yeah. calmed the calm concession and so forth. Well, yeah. More on a Friday, and the other thing is this: you this thing, and then Israel is really ticking me off. You don't take hostages to then negotiate with the hostages. I'm sorry that they're, they're going to have to be casualties, and we must take Gaza back. And there was, it, 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 we got to, and I have to have the speaker stop the next uh, payment 
to the uh, to the Hamas. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous already. Yeah. No. No doubt. All right, Ivy. Take care. We'll take our break and be back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in on the action. Call the Steve King Show live on air now. Let me see here. Let me look it up. Nobody remembers exactly. I think he might have said the F word on TV. Let me look. Yeah, I only got a minute. What's up? What? No, I know nothing about it. Are you talking about the one in Utah? I don't know which one that is. Okay. I, I I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't know. No, I don't know the, all the backstory. I know. Well, well, then I I don't I you know I know less than you on it, but I'm familiar with it. All right, let me go. I gotta I gotta come back. Okay, bye. All right. Welcome back. I'm Brian. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show. If you're on hold, stand by. You know, it is officially Christmas shopping season now. There's no better place to do your Christmas shopping than MyPillow.com. And with our promo code Kane at checkout, you can take advantage of all the specials there. And I want to talk now about the 100% Giza Cotton Dream Sheets. I have six sets of these, four regular, two flannel. Uh, Mike Lindell, everything Mike Lindell makes is high quality, of course. And the Giza Dream Sheets look and feel great, which means you'll get the best night's sleep ever because they're made of that 100% Giza cotton, which is the finest cotton in the world. It has temperature regulating uh, factors to it. You're always the perfect temperature all night long, all year long, okay? They're ultra soft, they're breathable, they're very durable. You know, I, I got the six sets, but the first one I got looks like the day we got it, even though we've had them for years now because we got these when they first came out. They come in a whole bunch of different uh, colors. They come in every mattress size there is. And there's an incredible deal going on that Mike Lindell calls the sale of the year. For a limited time, 
on the 100% Giza Cotton Dream Sheets with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. They are 50% off, 50 50% off. Just go to MyPillow.com and click on the Radio Special section. Click on the Radio Specials. That's where the extra special specials are located, and you can get your 100% Giza Cotton Dream Sheets for 50 percent off. By the way, they come with a 60-day money-back guarantee and a 10-year warranty. Pretty good deal, huh? You can also order by phone 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879. Promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Brian, good morning. Kerry. Hey, all right, Kerry, what's up? Uh, all right. Uh, Andrew Silverstein, I know from Brooklyn, New York. That's Andrew Dice Clay's real name. Yes, sir. He uh, originally started in Pitt's Comedy Club in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. And his, his I know his old act. I know him from, I was a, a cop there working in, the, I got friendly with him. I'm going to see his show uh, December 2nd at the Paddock. Oh, okay. And, it's, and as far as the, it had something to do with, remember the seven words that you can never say on... But my my rec my recollection is by the way there were more than seven words George Carlin was wrong about that there, there's other words but um, I wish there were no words I, I you know but there are but my recollection is is that he said his he did his nursery rhyme routine on MTV and that's what got him banned for life and it was produced by Dick Clark. and I met Dick Clark once he was the nastiest celebrity I've ever met next to Loretta Swit. Who's bar- I don't even know if you can consider her a celebrity, but he was he was a nasty man. But that was uh, he's I I still stick and I obviously you must agree. Andrew Dice Clay is one of the three four funniest men that have ever lived. It's hilarious. He's, you know originally when he did his act, he never even smoked cigarettes. If you see a cigarette, he didn't, he wasn't even a smoker. Yeah, and Ford Fairlane was a great movie. I love the Adventures of Ford Fairlane. I haven't seen it in a long time. They don't rerun it, but it's a great movie. Deserves a sequel. I'll send, I'll, I'll send him a shout out, but you know, we'll, t- we'll catch up as well. I mean, oh, I mean, you, oh, you actually, you actually know him. Yeah, I remember him with, with the Copa Cabana. He did an act there, him and his father, and everybody. I, I, I was the only first. So he knows you. Yes. Oh wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'll. T- I'll I'll send him a shout out to you. I will, hey, do it. All right, take care. I appreciate it. You know, that's the thing about living in Florida. Since everybody moves and retires to Florida, the connections of people you meet in Florida will blow your minds. Some of the people that listen to this show blow my mind away when I find out they listen to it. All right, now, um, I've been promising this all morning, and I don't, and I don't usually do this, but, it's, it, yeah, but uh, after the bottom of the hour break, I'm going to go through this this audio from CNN about MAGA Mike Johnson, this perfect speaker of the house we have. CNN is in complete meltdown mode, and I'll go through the audio after the bottom of the hour break. I was I planned on doing it right at six, but a lot of other things have been going on, and and since it's a holiday time, which we you know everybody I'm listening to other uh, radio shows, it's all fill in host, you know, all week long, and uh, shame on them. You know, these guys, they like to do their shows when it's uh, a regular time and it's easy. It's days like this where you actually got to work for a li- This is not work, doing a, a radio show like this. This is awesome. But on, on days when you're in a holiday week, it's a, it's a little more challenging, okay? And that's why the Hannity's and all of them take that time off because they're cowards. They don't want to be on the air during a period where news is kind of slow. But news is not slow. It's quite busy. Uh, so we'll we'll take our break for the bottom of the hour. I'll I'll get into this uh, <laughs> this exchange on CNN over our great speaker of the house, Mike Johnson, and we got a whole bunch more to discuss too on the program. Our number is toll free one triple eight go cane one. We're keeping it kind of open phones today because it's kind of like Friday. It feels like Friday. One triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. You're listening to the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977, celebrating 46 years on the radio. We'll take our break for the bottom of the hour and be back right after this. Making morning radio great again. I think you're gonna really love it. It's the Steve King Show with Brian Craig. Oh, man. 
And you have the 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 recordings for uh, Barry and for Youngerman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That worked out better that he did it earlier. So then the whole last segment is not a yeah commercial. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh no. It won't leak if the lid's closed. No. Just grab me a couple paper towels on you. <laughs> That's why I always keep things far away from the control board. Yeah, because <laughs> I've done a lot worse. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but this, when it's um, closed, yeah, doesn't spill. Yeah, just, you get a time when I had it open. <laughs> the one time. <laughs> even that, even with that though, I keep it far away. Well, I told you I saw a guy spill a whole Pepsi can on a control board once. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. It just went dark. You know, because the wet. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, it was. I hate to say it. It was kind of funny. You know. Yeah, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'll never see this again. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. There was one time I was on the air at another radio station, and it was all falling apart. And the control board, the whole thing, the whole desk, it just fell right on the ground. <laughs> the, it was the desk was like rotting. While we were on the air, yeah, pulled everything out of the. It was hilarious. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and it was one of those boards. It was because it was it was an old board, so the board was like from here to like here. It was like it was like five feet long the board and it just went <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was hilarious. Uh <clears throat> 
four Coming back. Six zero four four six zero two. Or visit us on our website at LaportaContracting.com. That number again is nine five four six zero four four six zero two. So now back to the Steve Kane show with Brooke Greg. All right, we are back. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Vince, what's up? Yeah, it's just uh, it's pretty crazy. A lot of these guys took this week off, too, because, I mean, it isn't a slow week, in my opinion. We're getting more information about January 6th and all the things they used to destroy Trump and put him on trial. You know, we're watching pretty much the, the, the fall of their, their reign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, pe and the people that they have filling in are like third-rate mediocre because they're all insecure. They don't want to have someone good filling in, you know, because the, the audience might like them. And that's usually the case. I mean, I understand that, you know. You never want to put somebody out there that's better or good, you know, good or better than you. But, um, you know, seeing the videos that we've been seeing from January 6th and all the things that are coming out and all the truth that's coming out really is what it is. Um, I just wonder, do you think that this is better timing or worse timing for it to come out now, you know, in your opinion? Are you talking about the tapes? Oh, no, it's perfect timing because we got, uh, we got our new MAGA speaker in. That was, he promised to do it, and he did it. Like in two, I, re I realized why it took him so long. He put this online platform to make them accessible to everybody, so that took some time to get it together. And, you know, so that's why it took two weeks. No, I think it's great, and it started a whole discussion. And a whole dialogue. Over the dinner table at Thanksgiving and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Perfect. Per oh, yeah. I was just also thinking about like how this momentum that we built is not going to really get knocked off by anything in the poll numbers that are working in Trump's favor. You know, I, I just don't see how they can run. By well, you know, here's here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. A lot, I, what they're trying to spin this as, well, we're, a lot can happen in a year. He's got to maintain this for a year. Listen, we've got a corrupt Democrat running this country in, into the ground. And uh, there's, there's no scenario where things are going to be better in a year. They're going to be worse under Joe Biden in the next year because everything they do is bad. And uh, so don't worry. Trump will be higher in the polls next year than he is now. I don't worry when they come to talk about momentum and things like that and polls and stuff like that because when they talk about momentum, they don't talk about how we've had five years of it, seven years if you really want to think about it. But they don't, they don't believe in our movement. They don't believe in... Well, you know, I, 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 I'll just mention, like I mentioned Taylor Swift earlier. They, they're just obsessed over Taylor Swift, right? I, I, I think she's a no talent. I don't think she's very good. And you know what? She's not even good look. She's average looking. I don't know why she's some sex... I, I don't get this... You know, but the thing about uh, uh, Taylor Swift, okay, Donald Trump has done what she hasn't even done. No one's done. He has been on permanent U.S. tour for eight years nonstop without notice and fills up the venue anywhere that he's at without any notice. No one could do that. No one could do that. And in order for Obama to do it, he'd have to have Jay Z and Beyonce there. That's the reality, and that's how they've been able to, to employ the, the American people. Correct. For so long. Tr yes. Yeah. Even, yeah. Even even President Kennedy, you know, President Kennedy. Why do you think he went around with Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack? Because he couldn't draw get those crowds on his own. But Trump can. That's the mystique and the, the majestic part of what we're watching, and they don't like it. They well, that's that's why I that's why I tell people that he is like a Martin Luther King like figure. Martin Luther King, Mar well, no, no, I mean, he, Mar like for example, the uh, the 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 Washington Mall speech of Martin Luther King. That that was Martin Luther King pulled all those people there. That was an amazing thing. Donald Trump and Martin Luther King are the only two Americans that can draw crowds like that. No one else has ever been able to do it. Time. Correct. Say, even if they try to say it's just a bunch of groupies chasing him, however... Eight years? For eight years? Right, and that's what I'm saying. And new people go every time. So By the way, was the first Trump rally in 20... What, did he come down the escalator in 15 or 14? I think it was 15. Was it 15 or 14? Yeah, I want to say one of the first rallies that he had was in Florida. I want to say. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. But I, exactly where he started it. But. but this is this this is he is the this is this is the deal. Okay. I'm gonna think about these these polls. There is a complete media blackout on everything this man does, unless you got Newsmax. You know, the television block him out. And even without any media coverage, they have him, he's through the roof in every single poll, even among young people. You know, the only thing I wish that Donald Trump would do that he's not doing is he need, I really think he needs to be back on Twitter. Um, I don't know what kind of contractual agreement he has with Truth, but he really needs to be on Twitter. And I was, you know, he had the most watched interview ever on Twitter with that Tucker Carlson interview. And he and maybe he's saving Twitter for next year when the campaign ramps up. I think it's more of a strategy thing. I think that he knows that he can play the the cat and mouse game with with all the big corporate yeah. and stuff like that. And in order for you see what they're doing to Twitter already, you know, not to get off. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work. You know what? What your media matters. Media matters is a terrible organization, and and um, you know they uh, and. Elon Musk is going to bring them down. They went, they they screwed up. They really messed up this time. Yeah, I hope so. I hope to see it. I hope we're watching some big falls of media corporations like CNN for what they've done for all of these people that have lied to us for years. See, see, this is this is the media, okay? Rush used to talk about this with the media too. The media, the the, the oh yeah, the the main. This is what Rush used to say. The mainstream media don't care about their ratings. They don't. Um, they, they, they don't care. If you're not watching them, they don't care. They know better than you. And that goes for Fox News, by the way. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's why they're failing. They, you know, it doesn't mean that they got, you know, what they'll try to say is, well, these other people play to the audience. Well, listen, we talk about things people are interested in. I mean, that, you know, media, like what we're doing or any type of media is a mix of both entertainment and news. Okay. Uh, you know, there's things that I have an interest in that the audience has no interest in that I don't talk about on this show. I'm a huge fan of Star Trek and Star Wars. I could do a whole show on both of those every day, but I'd have no listeners. But that doesn't mean, but, but you, you, I mean, you, 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 but, but here, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. The mainstream media are, are, are in decline because they're lying to people. They are lying to people and people know it. President Trump, Okay, President Trump gave two amazing speeches this weekend. Neither of them were covered in any of the mainstream media. It, if you if you if you get your news and information from there, you would not even know that they happened. I was just actually going to say that. That's what I was going to say. The, the, the sad fact is, is that when he does make a speech like you were saying, they're going to block it out. And the, the biggest problem is, is that if you're not on like Rumble or, or Twitter even per se, then you're not getting any of that. And and yes, you can get views on the things you're speaking on. If you go on that platform like Rumble where people are real and, and the, the even... Tw- yeah, but that but but you got to get out of an echo chamber. You, you got to reach people that don't already have their minds made up. And, um, you know, so that's, that's the problem with Truth Social. Truth Social is preaching to the choir. Rumble's preaching to the to the choir. You know, you got to reach people that are not already decided to uh, win them over to to our side. Trump's doing that, um, but but you know, Bill O'Reilly was was talking to Tucker. Tucker interviewed Bill O'Reilly a few weeks back, and Bill O'Reilly said, you know, the cable news are always going to be there, like the newspapers are there. They're just going to be in the background and irrelevant in the future. That's what's happened. You know, I definitely agree with that. Have a happy Thanksgiving, USB. I just that's great. All right, all right. I I appreciate the call. Yeah, and it, it's really a shame. Like this, um, the the poll number, the poll numbers that I'm seeing, I believe are historic in a primary, because Trump is not the sitting president. He's a he was president, so he it's unusual to have a man who was president running for president. Okay, so there's a new factor there, but even still, the um. The poll numbers that he has are historically high in, in a primary race. No, no one has been this far ahead in the polls in a, pri- in a primary with multiple opponents like this. It's, it's never happened before. Not this far ahead. And, and the media, it, it blows my mind that all the media, um, like this week, NBC had a whole bunch of polls. They went through them on the air, showing Trump even beating Biden. Yesterday, 
Fox News did the same thing. They, they went through a whole thing of polls and showed Trump ahead. And they all sit around and are in amazement and wonder, but they still won't cover him and his events on their air. And what, what people don't realize is President Trump is running a different type of campaign than he has before. I don't know who his campaign people are now. The real people, okay? There's some people behind the scenes. He's running a smaller campaign. By the time the Iowa caucus happens and the New Hampshire primary happens, he will have met or been in the room with over 80% of the primary voters and caucus goers. He's been doing small venues so that he can be close to these people. That's how you win primaries. People that are presidents don't normally do that. And he's, he's running a campaign like he's an unknown who was a governor of a small state that no one heard of before. And that's and people are going to find that this campaign that he's running in this primary season is the most brilliant campaign that's ever been run by a Republican running for president in the primaries. All right, we're going to take our last break of the second hour. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show, back after this. The cold, hard truth. Deliver warning. Okay, when I come back I'm, uh, for the break, I'm going to talk about Joe Thomas. I put the link, it's pinned in the chat, to get this book for free. You can get Joe Thomas's book, The Retirement Know-It-All, for free. So it's pinned in the chat. Click that link, send for your free book, and it lets, when you do that, it lets our sponsors know you support us by supporting them. And this is a great book. If you're already retired or planning on retiring at some point in your life, this book will help you. It really is great. So click that link. Send for the free book. All right, welcome back. I'm Brian. You're listening to the Steve Kane Show, and we have Steve back on the studio line today. Hey, Steve. Yeah, yeah, you sound perfect today. Yes, yes, yes. Great, great, great. Now, I want to tell everyone, you know, here we are. It's holiday season, and, you know, finances are always a thing around holiday season. I mean, you spend more money this time of year than any time of the year. And, of course, I'm talking about Joe Thomas. If you are already retired or planning on retiring at any point in your life, even if it's next week, 
you want to contact Joe Thomas. He's got a couple of offers for you. One is a free copy of his book, The Retirement Know-It-All, which is a great book. But he's also offering free phone consultations. No matter where you're located, free phone consultations with financial advisor Joe Thomas. And he's got a plan that will protect your money, stop you from losing money, and guarantee you income. And I know uh, anyone, could all, I don't care who you are, you could use a little extra income, right? Absolutely. Give him a call. And if you miss this number, you can go to his website, jupiterjoe.com, and both send for the free book and get the number, okay? His number is 561-743-0999, 561-743-0999. You can call and ask for the book for free and also set up your free phone consultation with financial advisor, Joe Thomas, 561-743-0999. And if you miss that number, just go to jupiterjoe.com and you'll find the number there. All right. Well, I was going to get into this Mike Johnson stuff, Steve, but did you have somewhere you wanted to go first? What do you want to do? Well, since I don't, since I wasn't watching Fox, I have no idea what you saw. I'll tell you yeah, that's what we're running into. Uh, let, let me throw out what I know of the story, which is very minor, but I have a feeling there was, it was very dramatic. I did watch it on Fox, and I have a feeling <coughs> to throw this out. There will be, be others last night who were watching Fox, specifically the show I was watching that really spun my head was the Laura Ingram show, the Laura show. Oh. And she was interviewing a guy, uh, his name was Vander Plaats or something like that. Mm. So he, what I picked up is he, he's from the Christian right. He's a major uh, don donator. And he is throwing his support today, as uh, ridiculous as I thought it was at the time, he's throwing his support today to... Uh, our, our friend, uh, the... Uh, DeSantis? Oh, okay. Kinky Boots. It seemed to be a very um, impressive array of people that knew what he was talking about, and I was uh, I watched most of the show. If anybody out there saw that, his story is that Trump is finished, that as of today he announced he's evidently part of the Christian right. Well, it's curious that a man, um, I didn't see this interview. I know nothing about it. I, the name sounds vaguely familiar, but yeah, somebody in the audience. well, if, if somebody was watching Laura Ingram and heard that, but I'll tell you this, um, if he is an evangelical Christian right political donor, he should be loving Donald Trump since Donald Trump overturned Roe v. Wade. He is, unfortunately, no one has informed him of uh, no. Yeah. Maybe an announcement. He said that uh, Trump's finished. Oh, Trump's finished. Oh, yeah, really? As of today, because of him? Yeah, because of him. Just the, the messenger. So, so this Christian guy thinks that his money can influence opinions. If anybody there. All right. Story. Please fill in the details. He sounds like a jerk. He sounds like a jerk. I have been, uh, Take me big time. All right. Well, let's see. Well, let's see. I, I'll take the most recent call that came in because maybe they're they're referencing what you brought up. You're on the air. Good morning, Brian and Steve. This is Barbara in Baltimore. Hello, Barbara. The, uh, hi there. For the last uh, week go by without wishing you both a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm late to the show, Brian. I just got I just woke up and clicked on YouTube, and when I clicked on you, the first thing that came up is that Johnson has lost some videos. Please, did, not J6 Smith videos. Please, I'm sorry that I was not up earlier to know. No, you're not, you're not up nor awake yet, Barbara, but that's okay. Keep listening. We'll get you up to speed. Thank you. All right. Take care. Take care. Take care. It's a, it's a holiday kind of day today, so we're being a little casual. So if anyone knows what Steve saw in Laura Ingram and about that jerk, Give us a call. I wanted to get to this uh, uh, while we're waiting for that, Steve. I want to go through this Mike Johnson thing because this is beautiful. CNN, you know, Mike Johnson got into the. He's very. He's an evangelical Christian. He was just with President Trump the other night at Mar-a-Lago. He's very tight with Trump. He is the most Christian evangelical Bible-believing conservative who's ever been a Republican Speaker of the House. I'm here to tell you. 
And because of the confusion by w getting rid of the speaker and the different votes and all the nominees, he got in without the normal liberal media vetting and shaming of him, right? Before they, he got, it happened so quick in such a confusing way, they didn't have time to go and research this guy and find things to slander him with to stop him from becoming speaker. Well, now he's speaker, he released the tapes, everyone loves him, and they found some old interviews of him. And uh, I love this guy. I, I didn't like, I was, I was suspicious of him at first. I'd never heard of him before. He came out of nowhere. And these old interviews of him, CNN are like, they're holding Shiva calls over there at CNN, hearing these old interviews of Mike Johnson. But I'm a um, little reference, you know, to get Israel in the mix. Um, <laughs> but uh, I love hearing how upset and depressed they are at this guy, Steve. So let me play this. This is CNN last night. If you heard Laura Ingram last night, give us a call and you can let us know about this Christian guy who's, uh, who's, who's uh, going to try to save Kinky Boots, Ron DeSantis' campaign. All right, so this is uh, CNN last night on uh, Mike Johnson. This is great stuff. Hold on. Oh, I just lost. Let me pull it up. Live radio, people. It's live radio, as we have to prove to you every once in a while. Here we go. It comes as a CNN K-File review of more than 100 of the new speaker's interviews and speeches. Okay, so they CNN has obtained over one hundred tapes of Mike Johnson that they'd never have gone through before and they've assigned a, a team to go through them and find things to slander him with. Giving us a clear and a stark look at his views on crucial things like gay rights and abortion, including this, which likens abortion to the Holocaust. <sighs> It, it is truly an American Holocaust. I mean, the reality is that Planned Parenthood and all these big, you know, big abortion, uh, they set up their clinics in inner cities. Um, they, they are, you know, they, they regard these people as, as easy prey. I mean, it's true. This is what's happening across the country now. Okay, now this is amazing. So he sounds just like us, Mike Johnson, right? I mean, these are things that all of us conservatives talk about. Now, and Andrew, um, what else have you found? You've looked through hundreds of interviews. Yeah, that's right. The The new House Speaker is unknown to a lot of people. He was selected pretty much overnight. Uh, there was no vetting process. He doesn't even come <coughs> from a competitive district, so he's never really had a real race. So we went through hundreds of his interviews, uh, radio, television, op-eds, to see what does Mike Johnson really believe? And one of the most interesting things that we found was on the day that Roe v. Wade was struck down, he called into a conservative talk radio show. Um, and I think the, sig the second biggest piece of news that day, besides Roe, was Clarence Thomas's concurring opinion, where he said we should revisit the uh, rulings that struck down, uh, the same that allowed same-sex marriage, that allowed contraceptions, that legalized gay sex. And this was an opinion that was so far out there that even the very conservative Supreme Court wasn't willing to go along with this. Thomas wrote that opinion alone. Uh, but Johnson actually very, very strongly endorses this opinion uh, from Thomas. He defends it. Uh, take a listen to him uh, right here on that day. There's been some really bad law made. They've made a mess of our jurisprudence in this country for the last you know, several decades. And, and maybe some of that needs to be cleaned up. And what, what Justice Thomas is calling for is not radical. In fact, it's the opposite of that. Now, we should note his office told us that he views those cases as... as okay, now the, and there's one more. The, the, let me see. I think I got one more clip. Let me, let me see if this is it. One of the primary purposes of the law in civil government is to restrain evil. We have to acknowledge collectively that man is inherently evil and needs to be restrained. <laughs> see, that's the problem with the radical left. They don't acknowledge a God. Yeah, I mean, so this, you know, and it, it, when, you, when I watched this segment on CNN this morning before I came in, the look on their faces when they're, when they're playing this audio of Mike John, they're in a panic. And they're, they've only got three, four clips out of hundreds of hours that they're pouring through. We, I, I, pr what President Trump pulled off by making this guy Speaker of the House with Matt Gates is a miracle. We have never, you know, remember, Steve, we were talking, I was telling you a few weeks ago, we don't have any Pat Robertsons anymore. We don't have any Jerry Falwells. And now we do. It's Mike Johnson, our Speaker of the House. And uh, this, this Christian evangelical that's opposing Trump by supporting a candidate 
who is in drag, Ron DeSantis in high heel shoes, the, your, your, your Vanderplump or whatever the heck his name is, he should be behind Trump and Mike Johnson. These, I mean, this is as evangelical Christian as it gets, Steve. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the strong opinion. On well, on well, I don't. No one's called in about the Laura Ingram show last night, Steve. If that, but if anybody has, I will, I'll put them on. But uh, we'll take our break for the top, and uh, when we get back, we'll get to the phones at one triple eight go cane one. Oh, what happened? Our computers just crashed. Oh, so we can't take our break. Okay, that's fine. We'll we'll just keep jibber jabbering. But our number is one triple eight go cane one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, good morning, Brian. My name is Marie. How are you? All right, Marie. Hey, Marie. Yeah, the reason I'm so high, I see. I'm calling you to number one. I used to use, I'm shocked to see that you're still watching that stupid fast news that we agreed not to watch anymore. Well, Steve didn't agree. Steve Steve didn't agree to not watch Fox. Steve likes Fox, so. I don't know. But anyway, yes. I ended up watching a little piece of that nonsense because my husband and I were really nice. Hold on, hold on. Can you take a breath? Can you take a breath? Let me ask you a question. You say you okay. don't watch. You, you know, let, me, let me just run this by it. You say you don't watch Fox. Is that correct? That's correct. But I tell you, you say that's you don't watch it because it's a bunch of. Hold on. You say you don't watch it because it's a bunch of nonsense. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so now you're coming here and telling me about a thing I saw yesterday. But yeah, it did fit about the end of the day that I watched yesterday. Absolutely. On and then, yes, well, yes. Let me finish no, no, my no, no, sentence. No, no, no. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Okay. Don't be rude. All right. Sure. Uh, I, what I want to know is, since I saw the thing and you didn't see it, how do you tell me what, what's in it? I mean, you're not telling me what's in it. You're not telling me. You're, you're going to do the spots in there? Or? I'm trying to figure it out. Oh. Okay. 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 So I can't even turn on the spots. That's no, 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 no. I was going to tell you how I saw it. It okay. happened because we were in a hotel room last night yeah, yeah, in Georgia for the night, my oh, husband and I. And then we, it turned to be, we couldn't find it. They didn't have any uh, uh, news marks. So I ended, up, I ended up seeing a clip of this thing. So that idiot that called himself a, a, a Christian, he sponsored this, this, this uh, you know, JFK guy. I'm not JFK, what? But, DeSantis. Uh, yeah, whatever. But... He didn't say that uh, Donald Trump is finished. No, it was Joe Biden that would be finished, not Donald Trump. That's number one. Number two, no matter what they do or don't do, those people, they try, they've been trying to crucify Donald Trump, but they will not succeed because everybody, even the left, some of their friends on the left can see their game. Let me ask you a question. Oh, this thing with this Vanderplatz tape we're talking about, on that tape, didn't Vanderplatz announce that he's supporting uh, I'm calling Mr. Boots now. Uh, the, the, yeah, Kinky Boots. No, it, it was, it, I think he supported the the um, the guy that the Kennedy guy. That's the guy he supported. That's what he says. And 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 that's what he's going to that guy. So that's what I saw. Unless I'm mistaken because I was halfway half 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 falling off to it anyway. But because if I feel this on my side, I was halfway falling off to it. I ended up seeing that. But what I'm trying to say is no matter what they do, they cannot, they will not disrupt Donald Trump because by the grace of God and all of us fighting for him, supporting him. And I must say thank you to Brian for loving him as much because he deserves to be loved. He deserves anything good. This is an innocent human being that's being crucified by a bunch of evil spirits. Well, so what you're saying is, okay, so we got, we've got a mystery here. Robert Kennedy. Yeah. 
So yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So so okay. So just let me get updated here. She says that this. Uh, by the way, we're having some technical difficulties. We cannot take any breaks. So all the uh, right now, our, our uh, recorded commercial system is crashed. See what happens. We get all high tech. I need a card. Got a card machine around here. Um, she says that the donor is going to back Robert Kennedy, not DeSantis. So we've got a we've got a uh, a disagreement on who he's backing. Yes, I did not see it. Yes. So if anybody else saw it, they I guess the whoever calls in next who saw Laura Ingram last night will be the one that ends the debate. You know that. Well, no, no. I mean, on what he was talking about. What's the debate? I don't know what you're debating. What's the debate? I mean, and there's who who is he backing? DeSantis or uh, Bobby Kennedy? So the next caller that saw it could let us could confirm which one he was backing. That's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. Well, if anybody else saw one triple A Gil Kane one, you know, out of the. I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but Laura Ingram, tell you a couple things about Laura Ingram. I, um, I did not know this until about a year, year and a half ago. Um, not only is she big time Republican establishment, she got her start uh, during the Clinton era at the level she's at now with um, uh, Kelly and Conway's husband, those Lincoln Project people. She's one of those Lincoln Project people, Laura Ingram. I did not know that about her. Um, I'm... But that's that's her circle of friends. I never knew that. That I was never a big fan of hers. I I think she's eh, mediocre. Media. I think she's not. I I have a hard time watching her. I I don't know what it is about her. She's kind of, kind of. I I think she's kind of me mediocre overall. But uh, but if anybody caught her show last night, we can end the debate on what the guy who's the guy is backing. But she said that, that he said that Biden's finished, not Trump. So we've got two two mysteries there. Yeah. Okay. Now I want to tell you guys this. Um, if you are a homeowner and you've got a wet spot on your ceiling, you have a leak in your roof and you need to call Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting. You know, Tom Laporta covers the entire state of Florida, both the East Coast, West Coast, and every place in between. He covers the entire state of Florida. He'll evaluate your uh, roof at no charge. He's been in business since 1988, and he does great work. He basically rebuilt your house, Steve. Yeah. Now you are in the district that Tom. Absolutely, and and what 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 you did is you ignored what we're talking about now you had a wet spot on your ceiling you did nothing about it and that, if you got a wet spot on your ceiling you've got a leak in your roof that leak got bigger and bigger and bigger and by the time and this is how we met Tom Laporta at Laporta contracting by the way you had to not only get a whole new roof you had to have 40 percent of the drywall in your home replaced because it was filled with deadly black mold and there were many other problems as well you can avoid that. You may just need a simple repair. And Tom Laporta will not sell you a new roof unless you need a new roof. Also, uh, Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting would like to wish everyone in our listening audience a very happy Thanksgiving. I'm going to give you Tom Laporta's number. This number rings directly to Tom Laporta's cell phone, 954-604-4602. Nine five four six zero four forty six zero two, and online LaportaContracting dot com. As the as the engineering staff is busily trying to figure out our technical problems, I'll give out the number at one triple eight go cane one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. But you know, regardless of of that, Steve, um, no one is going to stop Trump. There's just it's there it's an impossible it's an Don't believe what story? The, the, the Vanderplas thing that, uh, that uh, they got it. it's Trump, it's Trump is going to... Well, the caller said, he said that uh, Biden's finished. <clears throat> no. Well, what's, this is what's going to happen in Iowa. Gotcha. Okay? Trump is like 40 points ahead and all that stuff. 
when they have the actual vote in Iowa and in New Hampshire, it there's a good chance that the second place person will be closer than they are polling, right? So like if Trump is 40 points ahead in Iowa, he may win by 30 points or 20 points. And they're going to declare that the second place person actually won because they gained and have momentum. That's how they're going to try to spin it. But that's a phony manipulation. Yeah, but that's what they're going to do. So if you hear anyone say that he's got a problem in Iowa, that means they plan on spinning that. There's no scenario where Trump does not win Iowa and New Hampshire. The only place that um, is going to be close, maybe, and I don't even think it's going to be a problem there, is South Carolina, because Nikki Haley was twice elected governor of South Carolina. Um, but I don't think that I, she's got no, I don't think she has a chance of beating Trump, but it, it'll be closer in South Carolina than the others because she's got home field advantage. All right. If, if, I, if I seem distracted, I'm dancing with Mike here. The boy, the, the, they're running around trying to fix everything. And as they move here and move there, I got to move. So I'm kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of like dancing with the stars in here, Steve. I'm doing a step to the left, a step to the right, you know, a little bit Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's right. All right. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes, hi. This is uh, Nick from Coral Springs. Hey, Nick. Uh, I just want to read. First of all, uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, I just wondering, is Richie the bus driver ever called back? No. I listen to the show all the time. I know. No, he's. Okay, no, he's he's pouting. He is pouting. This long? I mean, yeah. He hasn't called in months. Nah, it's it has been a few weeks. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're on six radios. You don't think he's listening for people like you to mention his name? I sure miss him calling in, though. I nah, I don't, only time I think about him is when like, you and the mask lady have mentioned his name. But other than that, you know. I don't dislike him. Yeah. And we don't pick on him. He, he picks on us. He, who's Barbara? Oh, but from Baltimore. Oh, okay. You know, I'll tell you real quick about that. I'll tell you real quick about that, okay? Um, a, a number of years ago, you know, Steve King's the longest running show. We've been very popular for a long time. But a few years ago, the show exploded in, in popularity to its current level, you know, several years back. And Richie is never like that. Because, you know, because we're, we're, we're national now, not just local. And he always liked it when we were local because he liked to be like one of the, you know, he didn't like that we have so many other callers like from Baltimore and, and other places like that. And ever since then, it's kind of rubbed him the wrong way and he's been on this self-sabotage mission, you know. But he's not banned from the show. He's just, he's just pouting. I have a funny feeling though, Brian. I mean, just so long as he's never called back, I have a feeling that... Uh Please, he's okay. He's okay. You know what he what he did was so bad. What he said to me was so inappropriate that you know his wife took the phone from him and hung up during the call. Yeah. So 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 yeah yeah. What he said was so out of bounds, so inappropriate, so wrong that his wife took. Think about that. His wife took the phone from him and hung up mid. Mid conversation. Well, you know, callers like Richie, they're, they're very sincere. Really? Yes. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I, yeah. that's one of my favorite callers. Well, well, then, no. well, okay. Well, hey, listen, tell, tell him, to, oh, believe me, he is. Why, why give it to him? He's already got it. He's obviously his buddy, you know. <laughs> Seminar call. Okay, everything good? All right, we'll be right back. That's probably going to be the top. It's supposed to be playing the top. It's oh, it's the uh, 15 brand? Eh, that's what it is. Oh, yeah. It's playing, it's playing the bottom of the hour break. What the heck? Alright, so after this stops, I guess you have a long break until... Because we, we missed the two breaks, the first two breaks. Well, how long is the break going to be? Uh, well, it's, it's going to come back at 17. 
So okay. Do you think you could? Well, I know you can. And then when's the next one after that? Forty. The forty. The younger one breaks. We're gonna go half an hour with. The, okay. Because <laughs> I got nothing else to put in. There. Okay. No, that's fine. We'll do it. <laughs> Team viewer, and all of a sudden everything pops up. It's like closing all these mm-hmm. programs. I'm like closing all these what? And then I yeah. that computer, not mine. I was like, oh snap. Coach Joe, we also have a multi vehicle crash. Now that you're so important, a disabled vehicle not clear to the right shoulder on the turnpike getting southbound at 88 Town Road. This is what is sponsored by Discover. Would you like to use your debit over credit? Shouldn't you also get rewarded? Well, now you can have a Discover Cashback debit. It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases with no fees, period. Check out eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. That's drop number Chris Bar. Traffic, a service of the Palm Beach Kettle Club. Come out to the newly renovated poker room at PBKC. Open daily for cash games, high-end giveaways, mega bad beat jackpots, and big money tournaments. You can also play your favorite casino table games like Ultimate Texas Hold'em or Three Card Poker with just a $5 minimum table seven days a week. Enjoy all the racing and sports action in the paddock with over 140 new HDTVs, big screens, exceptional eats, and a full bar. Visit pbkettleclub.com. Brian Craig here with a question for seniors and those who care about them. How would you like to have instant access to a healthcare advocate at the touch of a button? Would that make life easier for you? You can with iMobile Advocates. iMobile Advocates will help you set up doctor's appointments, help with your pharmacy, even deal with your pharmacies to make sure that you have your prescriptions. They'll help you find a doctor, including a specialist. If you've been billed improperly by a doctor's office or a hospital, yeah, doesn't they didn't they didn't even play? Your advocates when you're in the hospital to make sure you get the care you need and the care you deserve. And that's just the beginning of what they do. iMobile Advocates takes care of all state gains health care issues too. Yeah, please. <laughs> it's good. I know it's going to take a moment, but I'd rather you just, if you're able to, just knock it out. Right, thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, actually, hold on. It says. Uh, let me see if you can log in because on my side it says it's not connected to the internet, but uh, it shows here it is. Well, it just said no internet, but uh, let me see. Uh, allow app and stuff like that to make changes and all that for Team Viewer. If you're a homeowner, business owner, or with a homeowner's association, and your roof is old or compromised, you need to call Tom Laporta. Yeah, like every everything just went out. Like, I don't know what the heck happened. Laporta Contracting was voted one of the best general contractor and yeah, best roofers yeah. in South Florida. He's honest, knowledgeable, and reliable, and will never sell you a roof you don't need. If you have an insurance like, claim, call your insurance no company is not the best day. So like, how did Tom it do Laporta. it? <laughs> New rules are in effect and allow Tom to negotiate directly with your insurance company. It's like you see how the, the, the first two breaks did play at the top of the hour up right here. Public adjuster yeah, or so a lawyer. Tom can handle any type of roofing job too. Residential roofing and repair. You got this one at the roofs and screens. So let's see if we can get that, that bottom of the hour break. Like, if it's roofing, that Tom could Laporta be the bottom of the hour break. Call Tom Laporta right now. 954 4602. 954 4602. And online, The Medicare annual mm. enrollment period is now through December 7th. Okay. Now is your chance to get a Florida Blue Medicare plan. Don't mm. go at it alone. Trust the people at Compass right, so Health, your local agency for Florida Blue. Right, that, I think we're going to get that break in for you. Oh, let me know. It's okay. I can talk till the end. It's no problem. Just let me know. Okay. You can also go online at compasshealthinsurance.com. Take advantage of the enrollment period now through December 7th and choose Compass Health. 
Are we back? And we're having problems. Are we back? Okay, I guess we're back. We're back. Okay, all right. There, there, there. Okay, we're having technical problems today. All right, you back with us, Steve? Okay, all the computers have crashed here at the radio station, and things are coming back online. All right, if you're on hold, stand by. Our number one triple eight, go Kane one. All right, let's see here. Let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Mike. Hey, how are you guys? Uh, uh, Brian, you mentioned stop cover. I actually checked the poll out two days ago, and Trump is averaging forty-five percent. Oh yeah, he's ahead in the South Carolina. See, but here's here's the thing. Here's here's the, here's what I'm trying to explain. When when it comes to this is this is what they're this is what they're scheming. I'm not talking about going to be when when the number when the number twos come in, they're they're hoping they'll that Nikki Haley and DeSantis will be closer to Trump than they are in the pollings. And they're going to say in the media, look, they've got momentum against Trump. Trump's losing momentum. That's how they'll spin it if that happens. Yeah. Well, uh, that's that's the unknown that's baloney. Mm-hmm. All right, Mike, take care. Anything else? Yeah, the worst guy. I, I haven't heard anyone ever talk that long about uh, Mitch the bus driver. Well, either, you know, when you have your friends call, that's what happens. Yeah, but my favorite caller is uh, Alvin John, by the way. Really? The, you, obviously, you obviously don't remember the Black Phantom. Uh, no, no, I do not. Oh, my God. All right. Oh, the Black Phantom, Steve. That was probably the greatest caller ever to the Steve King Show, wouldn't you think? Oh, my goodness. Those of you that remember the Black Phantom... I don't even know how to describe it. The, the Black Phantom. Let me. I'll tell you this about the Black Phantom. He was, and he hated both of us. Oh, he hated both of us. Oh, he was such a great caller. There was a front page newspaper story written about him calling this program. It, that was. That's how big of a caller he was. I know it was amazing. You're on. I'm not kidding. That's true. You're on the air. Oh no, he's. I'm sure he's passed away. He was pretty old. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Brian from Deerfield. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Hi, Steve. How are you today? Uh, you know, Brian, you took the words right out of my mouth when you described Johnson's rise to that as Speaker of the House as nothing sort of a miracle. I really believe it is because if the Democrats realize if they had vetted him the way they wanted to, this is, the, this is their worst nightmare having this guy as Speaker of the House. And he's going to be a tremendous ally for Trump when he gets in. Listen, listen. There's, there's always been a, de- uh, a cultural war debate between... Christian conservatives and lunatic liberals, but what's been but when's what's been going on in the last two or three years in the culture war is some of the most twisted things that I mean you know in the Miss Universe pageant was it they had two or three contestants that were guys this year, okay, okay, and 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 I've been saying for a long time we don't have a Christian leader we don't have a Christian leader anymore we don't have Pat Roberts and Jerry and then boom. Matt Gates and President Trump make this guy the Speaker of the House, who is he? It's like Steve. This guy is like having Jerry Falwell as Speaker of the House. It re- it really truly is. It is, and how he got he came in under the wire is because because of the because of the confusion and everything going on with with it with the removal of McCarthy and the different votes and Jim Jordan and all this stuff. He was able to skate on through without the media having time to look into him. It's almost like they're having a stealth speaker of the house the way he slid in there. Was it? It's amazing. Nothing sort of amazing. Nothing sort of I mean, I, I want you guys to think about this. That clip they played on CNN when he described abortion as a holocaust, every conservative in this country has said that for ever. Not a, not a, but, but not one of our Republican Congress people. I've never heard one of our Republican elected officials use that before until him. No, they don't have they don't have the uh, the backbone, and they don't have the uh, I don't know what you call it. His his core beliefs are real. Well, and they and they keep and and they keep. Steve and I have talked about this a lot. They they keep telling us all oh, this pro life thing. That's going to be the undoing of the. We've got a guy, a Speaker of the House, who says that abortion is a Holocaust. You're telling me that abortion hurts us? I and mean, he's the most pro life guy to ever have the job. You know, the great thing for me is I can now I can check my boxes for who I want to be Speaker of the House, and he fills all the boxes up. And and look what's happened, okay? 
Yeah. Rain on anybody's parade. I do like this guy, Johnson. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. Good. He's the right guy at the right time. To compare him to the great, the greats, the, the Jerry Falwells that were told, he's a little short, in my opinion, a little short in the charisma department. He doesn't, you know, a lot of the, the great Christian leaders, uh, you know, would set things on fire. He's a little low key. Yeah. Guy. Well, I, you're. Um, he's he's not he's not like a carnival barker type. But I saw him. You know, you remember last week, Steve, when you, you were telling me how he endorsed um, uh, President Trump last week. That was during an interview on CNBC, and I went back and watched that entire interview. And he was on with two liberal jerks, the two hosts of the show, liberal jerks on CNBC. He, Steve. He filleted those guys like you or I would have filleted them. He is, he is, he's not out there like, it's Adam and Eve! And he's not like that, okay? What he is like, he is, he is a maestro. He is like a surgeon with a scalpel. He, when, when I, I watched that three times. Uh, that, that's, it's about a 10-minute segment on CNBC with two liberal jerks. And they took turns because they couldn't get them. And he came back with them with questions and statements and filleted them without breaking a sweat. And I, I, I was, you know, Carrie Lake's very good, but she's like, she's like in your face. He was, he was mild-mannered and filleted them like, I, Steve, you and I, uh, are, he is our equal when it comes to filleting liberals in, in a discussion. And because, yeah, if I'm he serious. Dynamic, he, he wouldn't have gotten through to the speakership in the first place. The key is just to get him in there. Uh, his, his, his manner of communicating works. It's not, listen, it's, it's different, okay? He's, you know, Jerry Falwell and Pat Robertson are, are, were great men who did a lot of great work. But um, they, they, uh, they were in-your-face type people. This guy has, makes the liberals embarrass themselves. Is a big difference, you know. You know what I mean? That's that's what's that's what Steve and I do. Representatives now. Yeah, that's what that's that's what Steve and I do. Steve and I don't get angry and scream at people. We we humiliate them with their own words. <laughs> you guys are very good at it too. I, I have been. Uh, yeah. It's like a surgeon at work. But it but it's 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 it it only it's not easy. It's a it's a skill set. It, we make it look easy because we're so good at it, the two of us. But Mike Johnson is at that level, and Steve, what I um, I'm, I'm going to look up that interview again and send it over to you to watch. It it, it it should it really is instructional. I was I I fell in love with him when I saw that interview, as a as a yeah. The people right now, especially you guys who follow politics so closely, I didn't know anything about this guy when he took the. Oh, and you know what else they hate? He's got a black kid. He's got a black son. Oh my God! He's per. Now he's untouchable. Yeah. <laughs> oh, too late. Yes. Yes. So exactly. Working with Trump would be great. Well, I saw him with Trump, and if you guys can go online and look at this, you and look at the body language between the two. These guys are tight. They they didn't just meet each other. These guys these guys have been working together behind the scenes for quite some time. You can tell they've got. They've got a friendship bond together that just didn't been that just didn't happen at Mar-a-Lago the other night. They've been working together for a while. Don't you have a feeling he's the right guy at the right time? And yeah. Yeah. Think. I mean, think about the think about when Trump comes in in his second term with this guy as speaker. Oh, oh, fantastic! He's not going to have at least he's not going to have to receive the guy's putting a knife in his back. Mm -hmm. McCarthy. That's right. Really crazy about. It. Now he's got a solid. Uh, Comrade, and yeah, all right. Appreciate the call. Thanks so much. All right. Okay. All right. So what are we doing? Am I going to be back on schedule? We're going to break at the bottom. Okay. All right. We got everything under control now, Steve. We're going to. If you're on hold, hang in there. Um, we're trying to get some clarification on what happened on Laura Ingram's show last night. If you've seen that, give us a call. If you're on hold, hang in there. He's a Christian leader. Yeah. Quotes. Uh, Vanderplatz. I think his first name is Bob. Okay. New class. If you know anything about him, uh, give us a call. All right. We'll be right back. Oh. Yeah. So That's today? Yeah. So okay. 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 
Absolutely. Wait. Are we doing that now or the next break? Uh, coming out? Well, okay. You want to do a coming out? Hey, I, I had no idea you were coming by today. Nobody told me. That's okay. I was going to text her email and I said, you know what? I'll just go. If he doesn't fit me in, that's cool. That's, nah. I see you got a new hat. I love it. Oh, no. This is, I've got, I've got like a dozen of these. This is, uh, this is one of my favorites because I, uh, Trump has seen this one. <laughs> it makes me smarter. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Oh, that's awesome. That's what I like to hear. That's great. And then we get the snowbirds coming in after the first, and then we'll be on rocking and rolling. That'd be awesome. You should have me on your show sometime. Let's do it. Yeah, you record it like around in the mornings, don't you? Yeah, yeah I, I can, can make it whatever time you want. Yeah, talk to Vic and set it up, and I'll do it one day when I get off the air. That'd be amazing. I would love that. But That'd let's talk good. before so we're on the same page, what we're yeah. talking about. You know, a lot of times we just... We and then, just roll with it too. You know what oh, I mean? Like just, I'll do that too. Yeah, I mean, and then we can do a promo for that week, you know, coming up on Saturday, whatever day. That'd be amazing. Yeah. That'd be amazing. I, I really appreciate that opportunity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we get a lot of people, uh, you know, it's funny, I think we're going to get all these negative people. They're so positive. Which is you know, people, I'm saying people that respond to us with this. Oh, yeah. My show, it's, it's really, everybody just wants to have things go good. You know what I mean? So you want me? To, these are things you want me to specifically ask no, you, no, no, or no, no, not at all. I just want to talk. That's just okay. About what's guaranteed income? Because okay. So no, that if you have a pension, you get guaranteed income. If you have a social security, it's guaranteed. Is that true? Because I hear a lot of people say, "Oh, with the market, it's affected my pension." I hear right. people say that a lot. So right. that is that real? Yeah. So yeah. So that I don't know. Is that guaranteed then? If it's not if it's tied to the market. So annuities don't have to be tied to the market. See, I don't own any stocks. That, I'm not, I, that's, to me, that's gambling. I mean, I don't know what you think about that, but that's me. All right, hold on. What, what, okay, we got a lot of problems today. It's this one? All right. Everyone on hold, stand by. Steve, you stand by. We have Joe Thomas in studio today. Hey, Joe. Hey. Now, first, before we get started, thanks for uh, uh, sponsoring the Christmas music in the middle of the day here, because I really enjoy it, and it's the it's the great American songbook of Christmas music, right. which is uh, wonderful stuff. But you know, here we are. It's holiday time officially. I've got Thanksgiving, we got Christmas, we got the Jewish holidays coming up. It's a time of year when money is probably on everyone's mind because people are spending more money this time of year than any time of year, and when people are retired. It, whatever they plan, it's never enough because things change, families change, economies change like this one we're in now. But you talk about something that's that's pretty amazing, okay? You you have a way to guarantee income for people. And I think a lot of times when people talk about guaranteed income, you really don't know what that is. So what, what is guaranteed income? So when you officially retire, you've got basically three sources of income that can be guaranteed. And by the way, there's no other guarantees that I know of except this, and I've been doing this for 40 years. You've got Social Security, guaranteed by the government, of yeah. course. Number two, if you're lucky enough to have a pension plan from a company you worked for for 30 years, you will have a pension. If you're lucky enough, some companies don't provide them. And third, annuities. People forget about them, but annuities is the only product that can guarantee you an income for the rest of your life. Now, I want to talk about this with, with annuities. And by the way, I was, I was talking to you during the break. Um, pensions are spectacular, but I hear a lot of guys I know with pensions who say, oh, my pension's not doing that well this year because pensions, I, I guess, at least a lot of times are tied to the stock market. Exactly. So that's not really, it, it may be guaranteed income, but how much you don't know necessarily. Yeah, if, you're, if your pension's tied to the market like your 401k is, it's going to go up and down and vary. And your pension numbers, how much you'll get per month is going to vary as well. Yeah. But when we deal with annuities, it's guaranteed, meaning we can guarantee the income amount, how much you're going to get per month, and guaranteed for the rest of your life. I know it sounds 
hard to believe, but it works just like Social Security. We're going to guarantee that number. Well, a couple of things about annuities you, you told me about. Now, one, I, I'd heard about annuities all my life. Uh, get annu- I knew nothing about them until I talked to you, and they're pretty amazing. And you told me a story that I'd like you to tell again because I, I think this, is, this story it just blows my mind about annuities in the Great Depression. Right. No insurance companies went under during the Great Depression. Yeah. yeah. I, went for some hard, some hard times. And, you know, you have to be politically correct. This is about your money. And, and what's going on in America right now is going to affect your money. If you don't think tax rates are going to go up, if you don't think that we're still going to be in this for the next two or three years, I even say even if we get the next president who's amazing, okay, in every way, we're still going to be affected by this for a long time. Yeah, that that's absolutely correct. And you know, when you when you talk about having guaranteed income with an annuity, whatever situation you're in in your retirement, maybe you're a wealthy person, maybe you're a middle class person, working class person, you always need a little extra money because hey, golf ain't cheap, right? <laughs> exactly. It's not. I'm telling you guys, if it was, I'd be out there all the time. It ain't cheap, especially in the morning. Okay, mm-hmm. but even if you go in the middle of the day, it ain't cheap. You, you know, women, you want to get your hair done. You know, here we are in holiday times, you want to buy your kids and grandkids something. And you always need a little extra money and that guaranteed income. And another thing about annuities that you talk about, which I did not know this either, but I'm not the financial expert, you are. Uh, so that's that's why I, I go to experts that are successful for advice when it comes to finances, is you're not risking money. You, you, your, your money is safe. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I, I told you during the break, I don't own one single stock. And people tell me that's crazy, but I, I'm not into the ups and the downs. I like my money to be safe. Right. 90% of my money is in, in, in safe annuities. And, and why is it safe? Here's what happens. It's by the claims paying ability of the insurance carrier. So you've heard of these names forever, 100 years, Prudential, mm-hmm. New York Life, John Hancock, who I worked for for years myself. These companies are the backbone of America. They've been in business forever. Mm-hmm. And they protect the assets. They don't, you, know, you don't hear of insurance companies that do financial planning and go out of business. Because yeah. They don't. They collect money, and then they pay it out over time. And the actuarials figure this stuff out. Yeah. So that's how it works. And they're able to do things that your, your bank's not able to do. And yeah. Your financial broker is not Yeah. To, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, a couple other things that we, we want to touch on before we go here, is, and 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 this is uh, this is also something that you told me about that is 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 amazing. Now, obviously, if you are wealthy, you know uh, annuities are for you, but you don't have to be wealthy. How how little money can someone have to call you up and say, "Hey, I want an annuity." So we have some suitability laws in here in Florida. You have to be suitable to purchase annuities. Yeah. But the bottom line is, you have to have some of your assets that are available. To yourself, yeah. like cash in the bank, and then you have to have somebody you want to put away. Say twenty five thousand is yeah. usually yeah. going to be an amount that will give you some income. Yeah, it give you income, and it's safe. Now, uh, Joe Thomas has two offers, both for free. One, of course, is his book, The Retirement Know It All, which is a very good book. I've read this book, and it's it's more of a guide than a than than a book where you'll find a lot of actionable information, tips, and everything else. But also, you're offering free phone consultations, and no matter where you're located, I'm going to give you. Joe's number, but uh, if you miss this number, just go to his website, jupiterjoe.com, and you can get the number there as well. Uh, You can call him no matter where you are, set up a free phone consultation. Now, when people, uh, they set it up and they're going to be on the phone with you, they they need to have some information. They should be able to tell you some, what what things should people be prepared so that you can help them during this free phone consultation? Number one, how old are you? What's your goal for the money? When are you retiring? And approximately how much you have. I don't care about how much you have. It's about what goals we're going to reach for you yeah. once I find out those things. And yeah. Are you leaving your money to your wife, your, your husband? Are you leaving it to your kids? That's important. Not only the returns, but how is your money going to get to your kids? It's yeah. going to be there for them. That's, that's exactly right. So here's Joe's number. Give him a call. 561-743-0999. 561-743-0999. And if you missed that, go to his website, jupiterjoe.com, and you'll find the number there. All right. Well, Joe Thomas, have a great Thanksgiving, and we'll uh, talk soon. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thanks for stopping by. All right. If you're on hold, hang in there. And uh, all right, Steve, you back with us? Ah, okay. We got you. Okay, so when we last, uh, when we left our two heroes, just to do a quick recap, uh, we're trying to get some clarification on this guy uh, that you saw on Laura Ingram last night, Vanderplatz. I know the name, uh, but I don't know anything about the guy. So uh, if you got any clarification on what happened on that program last night, uh, please give us a call. Mm. Well, he can't be. I don't. I don't know. 
Honestly, and my, Steve, this is my opinion. Okay, now that could be right. It's just my opinion. You know what they say about those. If you're a member of the Christian right, which is really kind of a negative thing that the way it's used, but but you know, if you're a member of the Christian right and you're supporting anyone other than Donald Trump, are you really a member of the Christian right? Because anyone else other than Trump is going to lose to the Democrats, and the Democrats support everything that the that the Christians are are against due to our biblical beliefs. Uh, including abortion and a great many other things. So I would question someone being a member of the Christian right if they're not supporting Trump. All right, uh, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Richie. Good morning. Oh! Thanksgiving. I called. I won the parish. I don't want to make this about me. Steve, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Steve, when we won that last cruise, when we just said, I, I, I want to clear this, and the reason I'm bringing this up, when we disembarked the ship, do you remember who, who helped you up the ship, and who was with you at the desk, and who spoke with you to the, to the crew, uh, to, the, to the desk, it was me and my wife, and, and, and uh, Todd, and, and I have the utmost respect for you, I've listened to you for, for the whole time you've been in South Florida, when you went to New York, I felt terrible because I missed your, missed you. I thought you, I, I, to this day, I think you're one of the top talk show hosts of all time, if not the best. So I want to get that out of the way because Brian actually, uh, it's not an attack on Brian. Now, 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 keep in mind, keep in mind, Richie began by, I don't want to make this about me, and then he went on a, a monologue about himself. Well, let me let me just let me just let me just say this, Richie. Okay, we're not. I don't want to rehash anything here. I'll tell you this. No, 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 no. Yeah, but let. Excuse me. People brought your name came up. I'm responded. Okay, I didn't bring you up. Uh, okay, whatever. I know it's just a coincidence that he called after. The, Richie, Richie. Now, Richie, slow down for a second. Okay, it's the holiday time. Thanksgiving's tomorrow. Listen. I'm going to forget about our thing in the past. Guys have problems. Guys get in arguments. Guys fight. That's part of being a guy. Forget about the past. Let's not rehash. Let's move forward. Well, okay. Here's, here's, here's the deal. Oh, here goes the past. Here goes the rehash. We're trying to stop. Well, no, because you... you, you no, because you, you... Richie, Richie, listen, Richie. As hard as this may be for you to believe, okay, you punch too, okay? And when we punch back... You overreact, okay? We're, you know, and you want you you get a. It, it's okay for you to attack us, but when we fight back or bite back or tease you a little bit, you, you, you sound like a girl. I mean, but let's just move. All right. You want to hang up on me? Because you, you... no, I don't want to hang up on Richie. By the way, I knew this was you because I got caller ID and saw your number. Okay, I just didn't say. I didn't just do a big intro. So if I didn't, if I didn't, if I wanted to hang up on you, why would I put you on? No, oh, stunned silence. Yes. Uh huh. No, no, no. I didn't hear you because I, I said Richie. I knew, I I knew it was you, because I saw you on the caller ID before I put the call on the air. I just didn't do a big. Well, then you just said I want to hang up on you. I, if I didn't want you on the air, you wouldn't be on. There's other callers. They would have gone on first. But you remember your parting words to me, and my wife never said hang up, and she didn't hang up. Then the phone went dead. The phone went dead. You know why? I was screaming on the phone. You had me on hold, and you told Steve, I don't ever want to hear from him again. I don't want to talk to him. That's why I didn't call you. Not that I'm Whatever. Talk to me. All right, be, be a man, but, but, but butch up, be a man, and, and, and stop whining. And talk about what's going on in the news today. Uh, the, the last thing, yeah, I will. But here's Cause you, because you said you don't want this to be about you, and you keep trying to take it back to you. Well, you tell everybody, this is your word. I didn't like it when you guys expanded on the... On the on your, no, now you're back to you again. Now you're back to you again. No, back to you. No, 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 about what you said. Oh, my God. Richie, 
It's it's good to it's good to hear it. All right. Well, Richie, I got to Yes, it's it's almost time for the gold report. Well, the only thing I wanted to say to Steve, it has nothing to do with you. I I praise the fact that you guys reached the world and that doesn't bother me. What bothered me was YouTube censoring what you wanted to bring up on the radio. Richie, you no, excuse me. No, no one is censoring what we want to bring up. We may not talk about everything you want us to talk about, but you, Richie, no, Ruchi, YouTube has never, well, you're wrong. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. No, they did not. Richie, you, you, listen, listen, no, 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 excuse me. Richie, since we started live streaming, you have always tried to get us to not live stream. We were on other platforms before YouTube. We may not talk about certain things that you want us to talk about, but it's not because YouTube or someone censoring us. There are things going on that you don't know about. But if you go, you know, and, and you know, when we go on the cruises, I tell people things that we don't talk about on the radio and why things happen. You know that, and you know, so no. We're not being censored by YouTube or anything. There are other, there are other things in play for not talking about certain things that you think we're being, you know, well, happy Thanksgiving to yeah. Steve, and, and, and I'll go forward, not backward. Okay. It wasn't powered. Okay. Okay. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks for the call. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Take care. Oh, my goodness. Oh. You know, one, you know, Steve and I, you, you, we've been working together for how long, Steve? <laughs> I don't say. Almost. And we get along very well. Steve and I, I, I got to tell you. I, I think Steve and I get be- along better than we get along with our, our wives sometimes. And the, the, and <laughs> the reason, it, yeah, well, and, well, to speak for your own marriage, Steve, not mine. Mine's great, but I'm uh, perfect. But, <laughs> but Steve and I have an ability that not everybody has, okay? What happen, it's like Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens on the air stays on the air. And Steve and I will get into it on the air and 30 seconds later after the show, we'll talk on the cell phone and we won't even t- be talking about that. You know what I mean? What, we don't take things that happen on the air off the air. You know, that's one of the reasons we get along so well so many years. And not everybody has that ability, including Richie, which I understand it's not easy being on the air. Okay, we're all set and good to go. We'll take our break and be back. The cold. All right, Steve, we have William Youngerman on the line from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated. Oh, and I, this is, I, I'm really looking for, this is, uh, this has got to be a good gold report today. William Youngerman, how are the metals looking? Metals looking very good. A nice rally yesterday on gold, getting all the way up to $2,008 the ounce, uh, trading in a range of 1977 to 2008, closing out the day at $1,997.70, $20.10. $20.10 gain in, in just yesterday. Silver was up $0.31 cents at $23.72 an ounce. Platinum gained $16 at $9.36, and Palladium was down $2 at $1,064. This morning, we've seen gold get up as high as $2,006. Right now, it's at $1,998. That's just up $0.30. Cents. Uh, silver's down $0.02 cents at $23.70 an ounce. Platinum down $10 at $9.26. <coughs> And palladium down twenty one dollars at a thousand forty three. So metals remaining very stable, but gold and silver doing very well. Uh, oh yeah, and you know this this uh, this support level we're at. We're all, we keep like fighting for this two thousand dollar support level. And I, you know I was and I was wondering, you know, and I'll, for those that are new to the show, uh, gold was four hundred thirty five dollars an ounce when William Youngerman joined us. Okay, four hundred thirty five dollars an ounce. Okay, and look where we are now. It's a, it's a, it's really amazing, isn't it? I mean, it is. When when you when you were moving in gold, though, towards there were other support levels, like the thousand dollars. Like, okay, that was going to be the new. What is it when we get to these levels, like a thousand or fifteen hundred, or approaching the two thousand mark, that that pushes gold so hard? What's going on right now with with gold and silver? That's that's pushing it so hard with these great numbers. What, what, what would you say? Well, we've been in in some trading ranges for quite a while now. Two thousand. Uh, we broke through 2000 yep. over a year ago mm-hmm. as high as $2,050. So uh, the, the markets develop these trading ranges in which the traders can manu- manufacture 
trades, even computer generated, that keep them in a trading range, and they keep making $20 every ounce on a trade or something by selling the top end of the range, the lower end. As long as there's nothing external that takes place to push them out of that range and cause them to have to cover shorts or something, then they can get away with this. But when you see these markets acting the way they are right now, it's telling us that they're going higher. Oh, yeah. These trading ranges. Absolutely. The market eventually will establish itself above $2,000, and that will be the new base price for gold, and we're probably going to be looking at $2,150 for a new high. That's amazing. So people that call or stop in today, now, of course, you're closed on Thanksgiving and on Friday and open Monday. Are you open normal hours today? Okay, when people come in for gold and silver today, what are you recommending when it comes to silver and gold today? What are the best deals where people get the most gold and the most silver for their money? Well, the best deals are still the Australian kangaroo one-ounce gold coins that we really like a lot. They're beautiful, pure gold coins encapsulated, and we trade thousands of those. We also like even some of the gold bar products are excellent values, lowest premiums. Silver, we love the 100-ounce silver bars for people who are stacking up some serious amounts of silver, and we also have the 10-ounce silver bars and then all kinds of one-ounce rounds, and the U.S. Eagle, Silver Eagle premiums is back down to normal now, so that's a great buying opportunity. Before they go back up to the crazy $10 and $20 premiums that they were at. So American Silver Eagles are a good buy right now? Yes, they are. Oh, well, guys, you got to – they're beautiful. Well, the American Silver Eagle is an incredible gift, and it's a great way to get your kids and grandkids interested in the metals as well as fractional gold. And, you know, William Youngman talking about those great gold Australian coins. Those are some of the most beautiful gold coins I've ever seen. They're, they're just spectacular and beautiful. All right, William Youngerman is closed on Thursday and Friday, but open normal business hours today starting at 10 a.m. You can give him a call at 1-800-327-5010, 1-800-327-5010. Online, williamyoungerman.com. Now, you can do business no matter where you're located with William Youngerman by mail and by phone, but you can also stop in at 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca on the first floor of the Bank of America building just east of US-1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road. All right, have a great Thanksgiving, William Youngerman, and we'll talk on Monday. Yep, to all of you. Thank you. All right, back after this. For breakfast, now the Steve King Show is on. All right, we are back. And uh, Steve, if you saw the technical problems we had here at the radio station this morning during the show, you wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe, and everything is perfect now. So we got it's it's, it's amazing. Yeah, that's great. Hey, yeah, yeah, better late than never, Steve. <laughs> hey, I like I like it when things go bad. You know why? It makes it more interesting. You know, tough. You know, you got to be good at this to get through these tough times. All right, let's go. I've lost track of who's called first or last, and. I put Richie ahead of everybody else. So, you know, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, this is Eric from Fort Lauderdale. Hi. Hey, Eric. Hey, Eric. Hey, uh, listen, uh, President Trump posted uh, about six hours ago that uh, DeSantis paid uh, that Vandersloot guy or whatever uh, $95,000 to 100000 for his endorsement. Wait a minute. That that uh, that's on True Social. That's on Truth. I'll pull it up. About six hours ago. Oh, I did not check out True Social this morning. Yeah. Yep. Uh, DeSantis bought his endorsement. <laughs> Isn't that okay? Here it is. Here here it is. Okay. Here it, I got. I pulled it up on True Social seven hours ago. Ron, this is President Trump. Okay, Ron D. D. Sanctimonious. I don't know what the extra D came in for, but this is President Trump. Ron D. D. Sanctimonious, in an act of sheer desperation, paid Ira preacher Bob Vanderplatz $100,000 and then got his endorsement. We did not seek it. What is going on here? That's, that's crazy. And I, I'm sure it's legal, but is it right to buy an endorsement? Uh, I mean, it just shows what kind of person DeSantis is. Well, well, 
hold on. I want you. To, I want you to think about this. You know, and I'm so disappointed in DeSantis because you know I I thought he was a good guy, as did President Trump. You know this. At Wings Plus. Yeah. Yeah, and the, well, dishonest and corrupt to buy an endorsement like this. Um, maybe that's the norm in the uniparty circles. I don't know. I. Um, but I know Democrats buy endorsements. I've not heard of Republicans buying endorsements before this. And I, I'm not saying it's never happened. But between that and the shoe heel thing, the, everything about him is a deception. There's, there's nothing real about this guy. It's all lies and deception. I mean, and, and, you know, if you had your act together doing something like this, knowing it could become public, did, by the way, did uh, Laura Ingram bring that up to the guy, Steve? She had to be aware of this. I, I, I'm confused now. I'm confused. Well, I'm, I, I think I've got complete clarity now. This is um, this this backs up what I was saying about Laura Ingram being part of the uh, establishment because I promise you she knows exactly who Vanderplatz is and all about this. Oh, yeah. But she, she clearly was aware of what was going on. In fact, I got the feeling she was kind of breaking the story. No, no, no. Was she, well, wait a minute. Was she? Uh, did she bring out that DeSantis paid him for his endorsement? She had him on the show. You said. Uh, he wasn't on the show that I heard. Oh, they were talking about him. Oh my goodness! All right. Hey, listen. Thanks for the tip, guy. Uh, no problem. Have a good Thanksgiving. All right. Take care. Take care. Oh man, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Louise, the mask lady in Hi, I just wanted to say happy Thanksgiving, and Richie, I'm so happy you're back. It adds color to the program. Oh, so Steve and I are without color. Okay, that's interesting. You're on the air. What's your... Did we, inter did we interrupt a conversation? Yeah, are you talking to me? No. Actually, I'm not. I'm talking to Steve. I'm glad. What a, what a great question. I love that question. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Steve. I got to tell you, this, this, uh, I almost feel guilty doing this for a living. Almost. Almost. It's one of those days. See, you cut, all these other guys, they take off holiday weeks. We do the show holiday weeks and see, this, this is some of the most interesting time. You know why? Because the lunatics are, they get weird during holiday times. You know what I mean? They get weird. But I'll tell you this thing. No, I'm going to, uh, now, okay, no, no, no. Now that we got this other piece, I'm going to dig into this. Because, uh, Steve, let me tell you, Ron DeSantis has done us all a very good favor. He ran against Trump so we could be tipped off to him. If he would not have done this, he may have well gotten the nomination in 2028, been fake MAGA for years and years, and we would have found out what a dishonest person he was after he had the nomination or the presidency. And uh, he smoked himself out. And I, I find it this, this, this uh, I don't know anything about this buying of the endorsement. All I know is, is Eric from Fort Lauderdale get, get back from our big... Yeah. Whatever it is. Uh, can we pick up on this story? Because I get the feeling this is a story in progress. Oh, I'm going to dig into this deeper because, you know, this, th I want to know what else he's been paying for along the way of the campaign trail. And um, President Trump posting this on True Social, anything tr President Trump says, you can take to the bank. Okay, never question President Trump. He's always right. And he wouldn't put something out there if it were not true. That is huge. And it shows you how stupid DeSantis is. You know, one of the things, when, when it comes to someone being president, there's several factors that are important in normal times before Trump came down the escalator. And one of the, uh, there's the two most important factors in my, maybe not the two, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. Two of the most important factors in a presidential candidate is, are two things to me. One, their ability to hire the best qualified people around them. And two, good judgment. And everything that DeSantis has done shows poor judgment, and he's surrounded by terrible people that give him terrible advice, from wearing the high heels to this. Okay? And there's just, there's been nothing about, it's terrible. So it all boils down with DeSantis, uh, it has been in, in the recent history of this thing, it all boils down to desperation. He's been desperate from the, the time he announced his campaign. Everything blew up, and 
everything was a disaster. Every plan went wrong. And he's flailing in the wind. Well, I'm going to... And, and I'm going to tell you guys something uh, that I, I fell short on this program today with my show prep. And uh, this is an unusual thing because there's something I did not do today that I do every day before I go on the air. I did not check President Trump's Truth Social. I usually check Trump's Truth Social before I go on the air and during the show. And I did not do that today. And look what I missed. So what does that tell you? Always check Trump on True Social. You never know what you're going to get there. I mean, that if I would have, you know, one of the first things I do every morning when I wake up is I grab my phone before I get out of the bed and check things. I go to his True Social. I didn't do that. Today. I would have seen that, and I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we'll see. But this is um, the, the uh, this this little nugget that President Trump dropped about Ron DeSantis. This should be front page top and bottom. If I would have checked Trump's true social this morning, that would have been the main topic of today's show. And I fell short by not doing that today. I will never make that mistake again. I'm here to tell you guys. See you liberals out there how easy it is to admit you did something wrong, right? It's easy. Be a man, right? Okay, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Well, D. Mike from West Palm Beach. Hey, Mike. You guys are great. And you know, uh, uh, Brian, I think sometimes I laugh my water off because you are really hilarious. I mean, some of the things you come up with is just absolutely uh, amazing. I mean, it, it's just really humorous. It's better than watching a movie or a human movie on TV. Well, I must say, I, I must say to you, you have great taste in radio personalities. I must say, thank you so much. <laughs> there you go. Listen, we got, we got. Listen, we got, we got twenty seconds. So since you, you, you yeah. Real, real quick, Trump might reform the jail system because it was in there, and the jail system do need to be reformed. Yeah, that's true. All right, take care. I appreciate it. Listen, if you're on hold, hang in there. Uh, we'll be back one day and take your calls. <laughs> Um, but uh, great show today, and we got a lot. Of, we really got a lot of good information there at the end on Ron DeSantis and this donor. You're listening to Florida's longest-running radio show, the Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. And I know that's true because just ask Alexa, "What is the longest-running radio show in Florida?" You'll get the answer. Steve Kane, of course, has been here. Have a happy Thanksgiving. God bless America, and of course, God bless Donald Trump. Take care, everyone. WSFS 104.3 HD3 Miramar, WIRK 103.1 HD3 Indian Town, and Herindia. All right, guys. I will see you all later. All right. Hey, guys. I'll see you later. Have a great Thanksgiving, and uh, talk to you. Take care. Thank